<laughs> so we're a minute before six. Let's uh, call the meeting to order. Uh, and as we go through uh, the recording in progress, administrative uh, stuff, I, I'll call for any uh, additions or changes to the agenda. Does anybody have any additions? No. No. Okay. Uh, so the approval of the October 28th uh, select board meeting minutes. Uh, can I get a motion to? I, I just had, yep. Uh, Jamie's not listed in the beginning. Might want to add her. Be my suggestion. I read them. I didn't even notice that. <laughs> <laughs> so the addition of Jamie here. to the attendance list. Were there any other uh, changes or modifications that stood out? Okay. So I'll move the minutes okay. with that change. Thank you. And a second. second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any you opposed? Do you have motion? I do. Oh. Uh, and uh, board orders were posted in the uh, in the share drive folder. I assume everybody's had the opportunity to review those. Uh, are there any? Any conversations or questions about the board orders? No. Not? Okay. Can I get a motion to uh, accept or, or to sign the board orders? So, so moved. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. And uh, approve and sign the PVR 4261-E errors and omissions uh, certificate uh, from the town listers uh, to abate the RAL taxes. This was uh, something that uh, was recommended by the uh, Board of Abatement um, and needs final approval. Are there any questions uh, about that? Yes. I do have a quick question. So I looked at the form. It's, it's not fully um, filled out because it doesn't say change from to, which I assume is okay. It has a difference uh, pointed out. I feel like it should say less, like like we're going to receive that much less than we were supposed to. I mean, there, shouldn't there be a plus or minus? I thought this was just changing to get the addresses correct. No, it's saying what the amount is. Is it error oh, yeah, or omission? Oh. Looks like John, John's got a uh, clarification. Yeah, I'm not entirely sure that this Arizona mission form is the right form to use for this any more than at any other abatement. This form is used for when we change values on the grand list. That's not something we did here. Oh. In fact, we had the grand list values correct. We had the owners correct, parcel number spans. The only thing that got mixed up was that the listers didn't accurately put a mailing address for who should receive the tax bill, and that's what created this whole thing. So it wasn't a grand list error. Um, I'm happy to put my name on this, claiming it was our error for not keeping up with the right mailing addresses. But it's like other abatements. We don't usually do in errors and omissions. Okay. When someone comes in and asks them for an abatement. Um, my intention was, if you sign this, I was going to put it in the back of the grand list along with the minutes from the meeting. Okay. So it would be clear then what these dollar amounts meant and that these were abated amounts. And that's all I can do. Okay. I mean, to me, that you have, the way you've just explained it, it sounds like it's the incorrect form. Oh, it also doesn't sound like we have a form that really... Uh, there's, a, there's a decision, there's yeah, a form right. with a decision that I'll be drafting and working with Janet on and assuming the board will see. Um, and that, that lays out very clearly what the abatement amounts are. I, I guess now that I'm looking at this for the first time, I kind of tend to agree this is about the grant list and changes to the grant list. It doesn't really apply here other than addresses. Um, so do we want to table this until we can make the uh, adjustments and then um, Why don't we do that? Just review it in conjunction with the uh, with the final decision from the Board of Abatement? Or, uh, right. Well, well, yeah, why don't we table until we can just clarify whether this form is necessary for the okay. select board to approve or not. Okay. Thank you. Thanks for bringing that up. Uh, thanks for the clarification, John. Thank you. 
Uh, so uh, we have a period of 15 minutes for uh, public comment, uh, which will be uh, broken up between folks who um, are here to uh, comment on anything other than what is uh, on the agenda. Um, and the Bassages uh, had uh, made a request to uh, make, a, make a statement, so I, I want to give them uh, the opportunity uh, to do that. Are there uh, any others here to comment, um, Craig? And just want to see if there's anybody else on uh, Zoom that was planning to comment on something other than what's on the agenda already. Yeah. Hmm? Uh, Barbara? Okay. Um, so we'll try to do our best to kind of keep it to 15 or five minutes uh, to each, and we'll start with the messages. said before in other meetings how uh, much conserving this property means to me personally. Um, but I realize that I'm also very grateful for the conservation as a, as a citizen of Dallas. Mm -hmm. um, to quote from the, one of the documents that have been around, placing a permanent conservation easement on this important parcel directly contributes to the goals set forth in the natural resources section of the draft version by leveraging the Talus Conservation Fund to safeguard significant forest, riparian, and uncommon natural community habitats in Talus. Um, thank you all. Larry, thank you for yeah. getting this going. Well, we just appreciate you guys um, doing this. Yeah. Um, and, and I think we also asked to be on the agenda just because lots of people read the agenda, even if they don't come. And so this is our way of saying thank you to the people who aren't here. Um, Uh, well, well, thank you, and, uh, um, and I, I agree. I, it's, a, it's a great opportunity uh, for the community to realize uh, some of its conservation goals, um, and it's a, it's a beautiful property. So glad um, everybody was able to come together and, and realize this, uh, this opportunity. Uh, uh, Craig, I'd like to give you some time then. Thank you. Um, I have a quick question before that. I'm aware that Dot Helen couldn't be here tonight, and she had a statement. Will that be read out loud? That's what I raised. Okay, yeah. I thought probably. Oh, thank you. Um, so <laughs> why don't you go ahead and go first, and then I will. Okay, that, okay. that sounds right. great. Thanks, Craig. Yeah. Since Don Kelly can't be here, she did ask that uh, these two things be brought up. Um, she says, two things struck me regarding the last meeting, both having to do with the recent Bill Davis issue. First, I want to say that I appreciate that Jordan and the Select Board are clearly making efforts to follow procedure, something that the Select Board had not done previously. I take some satisfaction in that. I believe the matter involving myself and Stephanie Kaplan being demoted from the DRV has led to the Select Board taking matters more seriously and following the rules. Thank you for that. However, I do want to note that I do not believe that Stephanie or I ever received an apology, certainly not publicly, for how we were handled. A heartfelt early apology would have gone a long way to simmering down the anger and hurt feelings. Second, the matter with Craig Line was, in my opinion, kicked down the road. Here is another situation where an apology was warranted, a big apology in a timely manner. A seemingly forced apology from Bill Davis in a month down the road feels disingenuous. The delay surely precipitated the impact on Craig and other select board members' concerns. None of us knows what the private conversations in executive session revealed, but we do know that no matter who was or was not responsible, an immediate apology was warranted. Further, as I understand from the minutes, Bill's apology was for making Craig feel so threatened it was not for his own actions. The conflict of interest, even if only perceived, is clear to me, and I believe that Bill should have been removed from the road crew position a month ago. If not, I believe he needs to step down from the select board and not wear two hats, as so many people in this town do. 
This is also difficult. We have a community struggling between doing business as handshaking, handshaking neighbors versus following statutory rules and procedures. It's a challenge. That's why transparency and good communications are so critical. Acknowledging our differences openly and talking about them in a timely manner is the only way to achieve a balance between the two approaches. Thanks so much for listening, Dot Helly. Okay, thanks, Dot, and her absence. Thank you, Barbara, for reading that. I, I appreciate it. Um, those are important comments, um, and I don't have much to respond to at the moment. Um, does anybody else have any comment on that? Craig? Thank you. Um, that says a lot. Dot sent that to me as well, so that's how I was aware of it after she had written it. I guess I would like to ask each of you, the select board and Hugh Carty, if you think I've received a sufficient reply to the serious issues that I've raised. Um, Kari sent me the excerpt from the minutes uh, when they were written by you, Jordan. Um, I looked at them online, and to me, only reciting what the town personnel policy is, is no response to what happened, the incident, quote unquote. So, I'm, I'm disappointed, and I'd like to hear from each of you if you think honestly I have received an adequate response. Anne? Uh, if, uh, if folks are uh, comfortable uh, responding to that, um, I would be happy to provide the opportunity uh, for anybody to um, to speak up to that to that point okay uh yes is my answer yes i i think the select board has had a full discussion of the issue i read the uh report and what on the plan of action and it felt to me like it was appropriate the plan of action being to to review our policies to make sure that conflicts of interest are avoided to look again at the standards for road trimming etc and to make sure that and to take steps to make sure that uh, you know we don't run into similar problems in the future I think it's clear from your comments that you don't think you have and I apologize for that. Um, I think that it has led to really good dialogue amongst us. Um, good dialogue I've had with fellow select board members and other community members. I think we've taken the appropriate actions um, and are all, you know, sorry that you experienced this and, and but that yes, I think we've we've followed through and taken the appropriate steps. <clears throat> yeah, I, I would uh, I, I would agree agree with the uh, rest of the select board uh, on on this uh, and folks who have expressed their um, uh, their position. Uh, there was a lengthy dialogue. Um, uh, there was an effort to try to move through it as as timely as as possible, um, and and do it uh, with as much transparency as would be appropriate for uh, reviewing any any personnel matter. Um, you know, I think early on I, I expressed uh, your your the that, the appropriateness of of receiving an apology from uh, from the select board and I believe I, I did on on behalf kind of speaking up for uh, for everyone um, and uh, before we had a chance to really work through the conversations um, that we needed to work through um, I, I hear the concerns uh, for sure about uh, uh, about conflicts of interest I think the uh, the procedures were uh, were followed relative to the uh, relative to our personnel uh, policy. Um, it raised uh, issues uh, that 
were related uh, in uh, in circumstance to uh, to yours as well that need to be addressed, and there's going to be an on, ongoing dialogue about that. But that's about as all as much as I'd feel comfortable committing to at this point, um, uh, so that we can afford the opportunity to revisit that uh, at a more comprehensive level. But, I assumed. Uh, my response is, is yes. Well, I'm not surprised by anything I've heard. Um, the biggest lack of response that I see is that y you did not address Bill's actions, what happened, and um, to just restate the town policy is not showing me any consideration uh, other than, you know, we read it, we see it, here it is, and yet we think that this was an issue, this happened, um, nothing is changing, there's just nothing about your response to that issue that, that goes anywhere. Um, I'll say that the first actual apology I've heard from the select board is what Jamie just said. What you said in the first meeting, Jordan, was, well, at the very least, I think you're due an apology. Dot, dot, dot. There was no, and I'm sorry. I heard several apologies from Kari early on. The next day, I eventually got a, a kind of a pulled out apology from Bill, a couple of them, but at least he said that to me. The select board has never said, we are sorry. And this is what Dot was talking about in their situation. I don't know anything about that situation. So um, it's disappointing. I'll leave it at that. Thank you for giving me the time. <coughs> um. Okay, uh, thank you, Craig, for the comments. Um, I'd like to uh, move on to the next uh, agenda item, or the first agenda item uh, for tonight, which is the consideration of a uh, wreath making event um, to be hosted at the town hall. Uh, has everybody seen the details? That's, that's been removed. Oh, yeah. That's been, yeah. oh. There was an email that went out earlier. Sorry. They've withdrawn that application. My apologies. Um, I can I ask a question about that? I'm curious as to why we had to approve it. If people want to use the town hall, don't they just book it? Our insurance does not cover that kind of activity in the town hall, so it has to go through friends of the Callas Town Hall. They have to do it as a rental in order to have insurance cover that event. So that's why. So what bumped it into that category? The that fact that it was not a town sanctioned board committee or commission uh, doing a, a town well, government so action here. It's a group of citizens wanting to do a holiday event. And, and Thank you. correct me if I'm wrong, it's also because it was downstairs. If it yes. had just been an upstairs rental, yeah, that's they correct. If it had been upstairs, the no, friends, like the downstairs, friends. Exactly. but the downstairs is considered the municipal center. Okay. Right. So for and downstairs, there has to be a contract and the select board. That is yeah, correct, that and so and that's part of the town the management agreement that you guys signed each year yeah. with Friends of the Gallus Town Hall. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. Good explanation. It's so educational. <laughs> <laughs> so the whole thing's been withdrawn. Yes. Yes. They're gonna do it elsewhere. Delete. <laughs> <laughs> Love that. <laughs> Let's delete some more. <laughs> Um, so the, the next item uh, is the traffic ordinance then um, to take up and uh, there was a uh, clean version of the ordinance that was uh, uh, posted to the share drive which uh, has the uh, uh, modifications that we've been discussing over the last couple of uh, uh, Meetings and uh, also. Uh, Would you like me to state the specifics of that? Sure. sure. Yeah. So the, the changes since last time are we added the table at the end with all the road names and, and um, information, and then um, based on the request that was made at the end, we uh, 
reduced mul places where there's multiple road names uh, down to a single road name for clarity. And I, I think that is an improvement. Yeah. And then the other piece that's happened in the last two weeks is uh, with Barbara's help, I emailed over 20 folks who live in the Adamant area. We got 13 comments back regarding the signage in the village, and it was mostly positive. Um, so that's the summary of where we're at. Oh, um, Rose made some interesting, raised some interesting points right before this meeting that I saw. Do you want to um, Under Article 6, mm -hmm. loaded vehicles, um, did you see the email that I sent? It, it, um, it doesn't say anything about um, weight restrictions, and I know that there used to be a weight restriction on the Moscow Woods Bridge. Um, the annual spring weight restrictions where all the roads get posted. Um, I think it's April 1st to May 15th or something like that. And then the third part <coughs> is each year um, the town issues uh, truck excess weight permits. And, um, so, it, it, trust drivers or trust companies need to apply. Um, to I didn't hear that. Trust. It, each excess weight permits. The town issues them. The it, town issues them. So that should be part of the load of loaded vehicles because it's all to do with weight restrictions, and so people have to apply annually for an excess weight permit. I think yeah. I can respond to a couple of those, which uh, the. The bridge weight limits are on um, state website, I know that, and, and the bridge inventory. And then um, the spring uh, restrictions are also posted on the website, uh, the, the state's website. So I think we as a town have an opportunity to adjust those dates annually. And probably that's why the logic of not having it in the ordinance, because it's not easy to just change an ordinance. But I'm just guessing, yeah. I'm speculating. Well, I think the ordinance is so old that maybe roads didn't used to be posted before. That. Thank you. <laughs> because it, but if you read what it says under Article 6, it really sounds like some archaic language. It's really about insecure loads. Yeah. You know, like, you can't spill anything off of your load. Um, right. It's really kind of funny. You know, doesn't it? Yeah. You yeah. have to secure your load. <clears throat> Right, so, Article 6, it looks like it's not addressing the weight at right. all. It doesn't yeah, talk about weight. Said. There's weight restrictions. And, you know, quite frankly, quite a lot of um, logging companies work uh -huh. in the winter. And so they like to bring out their logs. And so in the springtime, I know in years past, they've called the road commissioner to say, if we get this load of logs out in the morning before the roads really warm up, mm -hmm. you know, can we do it? Um, so there's been a little bit of give and take, you know, with that, but, you know, heavy logging trucks can really do a damage in the spring. It is the, I do know we have rules around heavy loads on the roads in the springs. Are those written in some other ordinance or policy? No, that I'm aware of. Again, it's, it's part of this annual process that happens where um, I submit a form to the state, it's posted there. And then our crew sets up signage around town. And it's so it's a state process, you're saying. But, yeah. but we it, can still set the limit. Yes. The state isn't mm -hmm. set. We, well, we set the dates that right. heavy trucks are not it, allowed. And it changes <laughs> year to year based on I think that's the, I think the, that's the thinking, you know, based yeah. on the weather. The dates would change from year to year, right. and the weights are, 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 set, by the are state. set by the state, you're saying. I, I don't know about no. weights. Oh, but Tegan has a comment here. She says, I process the weight permits. I can share those with Kari. Okay. I guess I don't know. And I, I think we've, I, I remember seeing at one point an overweight vehicle permit. Okay. So. I remember what the context was. Rather than hold up the traffic ordinance. That's right. Yes. <laughs> uh, this can go um, to the, that, that. Committee <laughs> That's exactly what I was going to say. So, um, it, you know, the taking up the traffic ordinance um, was always intended uh, to go to the uh, ordinance advisory committee, um, but we wanted to take up a couple of issues uh, in, in advance to uh, be responsive to the requests um, uh, about Lightning Ridge um, and then also some signage and, and adamant because it seemed like uh, there was an opportunity to do that. Um, and. Uh, knowing that it would be uh, put on the charge for uh, for the ordinance uh, advisory committee, I think what we 
have the opportunity to do is um, to note Article 6. Uh, I, I agree that there's, there's plenty of language that I think uh, could be updated and mod modified. So we'll keep a running list uh, of those and uh, include that feedback to the Ordinance Advisory Committee. Um, in, the, uh, in the meantime, um, we, uh, thanks to uh, Anne's homework, uh, we found uh, uh, an appropriate way to, um, to take up the, uh, the changes that are being considered for tonight as to separate motions. Um, Shall I move to divide the question then? Yes, please. Okay, I move to divide the question so that we vote on the speed limit on Lightning Ridge Road separately from the rest. Of, well, we don't have a motion. Actually, we need a motion for me to divide, sorry. <laughs> right. Um, okay, I move the question. Move the question to uh, adopt the uh, road ordinance as as modified, uh, with the speed limit adjustment on Lightning Ridge uh, to be 30 miles an hour, uh, except for where it's posted already as 25, um, and uh, the adoption of the table as Appendix A. No, no, I'm, oh. I'm moving it as written right now. He, uh, yeah. Oh, you yeah. Didn't say I'm just summarizing. Oh, he said yeah. I'm sorry. I'm not looking. Um, and. Uh, Wait, just, uh, oh, and the uh, signage, the yield signage uh, for Adamant. Um, and the table of roads. And the table of roads as Appendix A. Uh, so if I, I could... will second that motion. Okay. okay. And now I move to divide the question so that we vote on the question of the speed limit change on Lightning Ridge Road separately from the rest of the motion. Okay. And we'll take that one up first. Uh, well, I guess... Do we need uh, do we need to accept that motion? Yes, it needs a second, and it needs to be allowed. Yes. Bill, how about you second that? I'm going to vote in favor of this one. Just to let me get my vote. And I guess technically, since I moved and Jamie seconded the original, I'll accept that uh, division of the question. Uh, I think you have a choice. Uh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Um, so uh, I'd like to uh, take up a vote uh, to consider uh, the uh, Lightning Ridge speed limit reduction to 30 miles an hour um, as currently proposed. Um, give me a second for that. Second. And I don't think what needs to be no, a second. I've already motion. moved to deny okay. the question, yeah. so we're just going to move that piece. So now we're discussing that piece. Second. Is there any further discussion on that item? Well, I, Anne probably has some things to say. Oh, I don't need to say more than I said at the okay. last meeting. All right, I'm fine. All right. Well, I, <laughs> well, what Anne said at the last meeting made me go back and look at the report. And um, it certainly does say the 85th percentile is 34.9 miles an hour. But then I read that whole instruction book you sent earlier that has all the ways, all the factors you're looking at. And there's this 10 mile an hour pace speed, which is 20 to 29. And it looks to me like 58% of the traffic is in that band, that speed band. The modal speed appears to be 27 miles an hour. The mean is 28 miles an hour. So all of that seemed to me to support the 30 mile an hour. Thank you, Christine. Yeah. That was my that was my reading. <laughs> and I, I would uh, tend to agree uh, in consideration of uh, other characteristics of the of the road uh, that uh, that the adjustment is is warranted. Uh, so, are there any other uh, questions or uh, comments to register with the speed limit change? So call uh, for a vote then. Um, all in favor of the reduction of the speed limit to 30 miles an hour. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Yes. Uh, nay. <laughs> uh, the motion carries. And uh, then we'll take out a motion to accept the, uh, the rest of the, uh, the changes as, as proposed. Can I get a motion for that? Or I guess we don't need to. We don't need it. Okay. So, uh, is there any further discussion about the uh, additional changes? Okay. 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 Yeah. 
I did want to acknowledge that there was a little bit of a difference of opinion among the Maple Corner folks about uh, like where they wanted the signs and stuff. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Some some of that support was couched in. Yes. I think there is even a better way. But. Yes. So. Uh, are we just going to go with the concept one? Is that what the is that what the draft ordinance says? Does it follow the concept? Yes, one? It, okay. it, it's it's just the addition of one yield sign is what the ordinance refers to. That concept also includes three pedestrian right. slow, right. which and are not subject to the ordinance. ordinance. Right. We can do right. that, and then we you've already decided that we're going to add speed yeah. detection signs uh, further. On the on the road on the yes. road. Yes. So, I, and the other thing I would say that this is not set in stone. We we can yes. change if we, if of we course. deserve the change. Okay. But it, it looked from the emails, the, the the responses to the questions that you forwarded to us, that most of the people in Adamant were 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 feeling like this was. Yeah, I thought eleven out of thirteen. My interpretation was eleven out of thirteen supported. About half of those eleven said, "Well, you think about doing this as well." Or, right. Right. Okay. But they just did not support. And, and Carrie, just for clarification, you just said the ordinance says adding one, but it looks like we're adding two yield sites at the two different places: Haggard right. Road and Sodom Pond Road. Oh. Oh. Yes. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. I forgot about the Sodom Pond. That's okay. that's not quite in the. In the okay. Direction. Okay. I don't know that anyone commented on that because it's Everyone. it's just a no-brainer. Okay. Mm -hmm. Great. So I'll call, call for a vote then uh, on adopting the road ordinance as, as currently proposed. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Great. Great. So I, I brought a clean copy thinking you might adopt this <laughs> uh, because I wanted you to sign it tonight so that we can follow the process, which is to post this in five, the signed you know, ordinance in right. five places. Right. We need to post in the newspaper. I don't know if this is like a classified. I have to research what this looks like. But that you know, warning that the town that you've adopted this change uh, and notifying people that they have 44 days to submit a petition to disapprove. Does Tegan know? Mm -hmm. I think she's saying I can help with that. Okay. Yes. Curry, uh, 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 help me if I'm remembering correctly. The front porch forum can count as a newspaper. Oh. Do you, does anybody remember that? It does not. It does not. Okay. I, I don't think in this particular not. case. Okay. Um, yeah, I would go back to your rules of procedure and your, you know, mm -hmm. public notice. I think is the time for it. I think it would make plenty of sense to, to post it mm -hmm. in front front porch forum. But uh, you know, I think we're yeah. okay. Yeah. Yeah. And that was my That's last point good. was I, you know, I'd be willing to draft something and maybe work with Jordan to, to get a message out there that'll be seen much more broadly than classified in front porch. And then I guess the only other uh, comment I have is uh, signage. Uh, so we uh, have a sign count uh, for making the change in, uh, in addition to a, a couple of additional ones that it, we thought at the time made sense. Uh, it was somewhere in the neighborhood of six, I think, uh, 30 mile an hour um, speed limit. So I guess even, even though that we technically have this uh, period of um, uh, seasoning <laughs> the ordinance, um, it, it likely makes sense to go ahead and purchase those signs so that we're prepared to install them. Um, and should should there be a petition that is successful, uh, you know, I think there's plenty of need for some of the 30 mile an hour signs to be updated. Um, so I don't think that that would be a <coughs> fool's errand. Okay. Um, does that sound about right to everybody else? Yeah. Okay. Great. Uh, well, thank you. And thank you. Yeah. yeah. A couple of anecdotal things here. <laughs> Excuse me. I guess once this, once the ordinance is passed, it could tell ask the school to put that in a newsletter for the parents to mm -hmm. and maybe tell the bus company too. Uh, just to, that would be just a thought. And so I don't feel so bad. Uh, this is the total, not irrelevant, but interesting. My daughter lives in Sun Road in southern New Hampshire, down near Manchester, in a town called Amherst. And in that little town, there's paved roads everywhere, and it's out in the middle of nowhere, uh, and they're all 30 mile an hour speed limits. 
Oh, my daughter, when I, was, when I rushed to daycare for my granddaughter, and the cop stops her and warned her, says, you know, we take 30 seriously, kind of. And I was driving those roads. Well, so I don't like to drive on the heavy, fancy roads with all the interstate, with all the uh, strips and everything. So I go the back way. And it's 30 miles an hour for miles and miles on pavement, and there were no houses hardly. But these, they take it seriously down there. Live free or die. You know, <laughs> So I guess if this is a road that's paved, you know, uh, no houses, lightning invasion out there. Lots of houses and dirt road. Yeah, really. Anyway, just a preacher for that. Yeah, I, I, did, I didn't go to seminary. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, I also wanted to express the, the, some, some patient, or, uh, thanks for the patience uh, as we kind of work through this. We really wanted to be diligent about following the procedure and, and making sure that we're, you know, setting an example for, uh, for future uh, uh, revisions and, uh, and, and studies. Um, and, uh, you know, I think what it's really going to come down to is enforcement and uh, that hasn't been lost on, on anyone and, uh, and, and knowing uh, what our current budget gets us for hours uh, with the Sheriff's Department, I think we're going to have to Mm -hmm. uh, look at uh, look at that budget and uh, figure out how we're going to be strategic about you know getting the enforcement that we need to help force the plans. One step at a time. One step at a time. <laughs> thank you, Michael. Um, well, thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you, Doug. Thank you. If you want to <clears throat> put the speed bumps in, I can do that. <laughs> <laughs> no doubt, Doug. Uh, no uh, doubt. Uh, 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 I appreciate you. Look right underneath it. You want to find mine. Well, thanks for the offer. We'll uh, <laughs> we'll table that one for now. Uh, we'll, we'll see what we can do with the first. Thank you, uh, Jamie. Yeah, uh, two quick on. things. I just wanted to thank Barbara and whoever else oh, yes. worked on this. I know it is tedious and time-consuming mm -hmm. and difficult, yeah. Many and things. it is way better readability now yeah. than it did before. Yeah. And I really yeah. appreciate yeah. that effort. Um, so, and, and so will everyone who has to read that's it. That's right, exactly. <laughs> um, and also, just a to do note do we have to talk to maybe Toby about any alterations on the electronic signs? They're probably set now to flash at 35 or something. Yeah, that's right. Once this goes into effect, we'll want to remember to change the programming of the signs. <laughs> Keeping us on task. All right. Uh, well, we'll put that one to bed for now and uh, move on to. You know, that I took us three years to get this done. And he told me, and, I, and then I complained about the trees all dying because they're putting the salt way up next to And he tells me that he won't leave me hanging. I've been hanging for three years. The trees are cold out there. <laughs> uh, we got her done. <laughs> yeah, come <boy. laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'd like to move on to uh, the fiscal year budget uh, conversation. Um, is that uh, next on your list, Kari? Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Please. Um, so uh, to start off the conversation, we've got the Conservation Commission and uh, the Sanitary Commission tonight, uh, as far as committees uh, weighing in, and uh, Larry's here. So uh, let's start with that one. Okay, thank you. First of all, I'd like to thank you for postponing our presentation for two weeks. Uh, it was a big help to me and fan away. So anyway, I'm, I'm glad that uh, uh, they fit your schedule. Um, I, we prepared a document, and I hope you uh, mm -hmm. got it. I'm sure you did. Barbara was going to send it out. Um, this represents the <coughs> commission's um, um, discussion of the question of <coughs> budget proposals, uh, which we we took up at several meetings. <coughs> this represents the, the consensus at the at the close of those discussions. Um, the, um, the the budgets that we're proposing is bigger, obviously, uh, than the prior budget um, for this fiscal year. But part of it um, represents. Uh, a request to put some things back in that were taken out last year. That's the first item. The um, the uh, re the secretary recording secretary's wages. Um, you may recall that we um, that we've had this in in the budget for quite a time, and um, outside people had um, t 
taken the job periodically, and we got really good detailed minutes when we had um, a couple of those people doing it, Candy Smith and especially Katie Lane Carnes. Uh, but the quality of, of meeting minutes uh, drops off when, when you have just an average uh, member, certainly, uh, doing it, or, or can. <clears throat> we asked Paul to, oh, Andrew, to do this, and he, he took it on, and um, he didn't think it last year when he was first doing it that this was something that, that he felt comfortable asking for that um, stipend that we had uh, previously provided, but after a year of doing it and realizing what's involved in it, and, and I have to say doing an incredibly good job of detailed minutes. They're almost like a kind of a little written history of the Conservation Commission. It's extremely valuable. If you have no idea what's going on, you need to go back and take a look. So we, we've asked uh, if those, uh, if that um, stipend could be reinstated um, this year. <laughs> <coughs> The education and training um, is a fairly has been a fairly constant item, uh, and we haven't used it very much. Uh, we have, at this point, vague but big plans uh, over the coming year to um, develop, um, uh, hopefully, a series of public gatherings um, built around. Um, the, um, the state uh, urged policy now to, uh, to work as hard as we can to uh, find people who are willing to do uh, what Scott and, and Charlotte did, um, and hopefully in some of the really um, high importance areas, uh, particularly along the west side of the town where those big interior forest blocks are. So the CC expenses line down below that, um, and the uh, education and training, we, we asked that for those to be the same. I anticipate there would be probably some expenses if we bring in outside people to talk about some of these things. The green up seems to have just disappeared. Uh, it was never in our budget, and it was only put there briefly, I guess. OK, the, the last three. Uh, is, is where the rubber hits the road. Um, the conservation fund, um, which um, <clears throat> I'm not sure the precise figure right now, but it's probably around in the high 30s uh, after the funds were taken out for uh, Scott and Charlotte's um, easement. <clears throat> and the um, money for the um, survey of the Blizzcon County Forest, which was approved, it was my understanding, approved on the, on the basis that uh, the $5,000 would come from the conservation fund, the understanding that that would be replaced. We had asked if it would come from some regular um, general budget fund for things to help keep the town property. But so um, that's figured into what's, what's present here. Um, what we're what we're basically asking, um, because we think it's important to, to build the fund back up. It's previously been at fairly high levels, um, which turned out to be really important when um, the Armstrong Farm came along, and that was a thirty thousand dollar shot, and then the Memorial Hall came along, and that was a fifty thousand dollar shot um, that depleted the budget um, of the conservation fund quite a bit and that hasn't built back up. Um, we don't have any, uh, at this moment, we don't have any um, uh, concrete um, properties that, that we're trying to move forward through this process, uh, but that's not unusual. Um, they don't you don't often know about them. Um, that's been the historical practice for many of these properties. I think like, like, like um, Scott and Charlotte's property, I mean, I knew about it because we've talked about it over the years. Um, <clears throat> but there have been long periods of time when there was, 
if my memory holds correctly, in the neighborhood of $100,000 in that, in that fund, and is considerably less than that now. Uh, so what, what we're asking, and I, I hope this accurately reflects what, uh, what has happened, is that for this year, uh, we're asking for $10,000, but that $10,000 represents the reimbursement of the $5,000 that was approved combined with another $5,000. So, um, so that's the only hard money we're asking for uh, toward the conservation uh, fund this year. We added our hopes that the town might, uh, that we might as we go forward, at least if we can find willing partners for some of these important uh, conservation easements, we hope that the town might be willing to consider this important enough uh, public benefit that, that it could be raised, but that's not precise. Obviously, we can't ask you to pledge it for FY26, but this is just what we're um, stating our, our, our hopes for the, for the future. Should I stop after these or just go through? Oh. Well, I have a question about the equipment. Okay, no, I mean, I mean should I stop and let you oh. ask questions about each thing? No, I think uh, let's um, yeah. let's roll through the, okay. uh, the rest of the items and then we'll, okay. um, All right. we'll have a discussion can, can before. Deal with those relatively quickly. The mm -hmm. Lakes and Streams newsletter, the, the Conservation Commission is, is again a, a big supporter of that, uh, that document uh, and its continued availability in hard copy. The last year, um, you authorized $750 toward that um, document, and then you, um, well, Ann pointed out the $250 that's in the uh, CC expenses fund. We didn't have to ask for your permission if we want to consider that a conservation commission expense. We could, and so we did and, and contributed um, $1,000 to what ultimately uh, turned out to be a, about a $1,600 um, project. And um, so um, what we're asking now is that you consider and hopefully approve reverting to a policy that used to be more the case in prior years that was stopped by your predecessors, and that is um, being willing to, to provide the, the bulk of the, uh, of the funds for um, one annual um, uh, Lakes and Streams uh, newsletter. And then finally, um, last year we asked that $600 be put in the budget for a, a heavy duty weed eater uh, of some kind that we could use in an initiative to work on mainly Phragmites uh, removal. And um, we weren't able to, there were just too many things on our agenda, so we ended up, we being the Conservation Commission, just not doing any heavy duty uh, um, invasive species work. The um, Lakes and Streams Committee um, and a couple, of, which I'm also on, and a couple of other folks, uh, did go back to a number of the places that we, that we um, cut last year and, and did that again, but it wasn't a major um, outreach. And again, we're hoping to, to get back to that along with the Lakes and Streams Committee in a much um, uh, more significant way. Uh, the Phragmites is taking over the, 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 the wetlands along many of our streams. And I recently saw a thing that um, indicated that, uh, is it the wood turtle? I, I apologize, I get confused about that. That's on the endangered species list of, for the state. Mm -hmm. And one of its primary habitats, I think, is Duger Brook. And Duger Brook down on uh, North Callis Road is just a nightmare on both sides of it. Um, yeah. I think one of those properties has changed hands. I'm hoping if it has, that the new owners might be a little bit more open to letting us go on there uh, and, and try to deal with that. But it would be really good if we could get that down. Um, and the Lakes and Streams Committee has been working with the Department of Transportation, and we've had a, a, a guy out who's uh, Going to see the Phragmites, especially along uh, Highway 12, which is where the, the Transportation Department's authority comes in, and it's there's just some nightmare positions there. 
and we're trying to figure out a way that, that we can efficiently work with landowners and get the approval necessary from the state this year to try to attack some of those. We're under no illusions. We're not going to eliminate this. The hope is that, and, and it has to happen pretty much every year, which is a really hard thing to make happen. Uh, but it does seem to stop it in its tracks a little bit if you, if you do a thorough job of cutting down a patch. And, you know, and a holding action is, if we can manage it, is better than nothing is the way we're, we're looking at it. Of course, there's a whole long list of invasive species that are either here or will be soon. And so, uh, but because this is such a damaging thing to the waterways, it's been a priority for us. So that's why we're asking for that. So that's the, the total of our requests for this year. And we may not have taken Barbara's help, a friendly advice to us uh, when she notified us of this, but we felt it important to ask for what we thought we really needed. So. Well, uh, thank you, uh, Larry, for uh, pulling that together and, and uh, background information for, for each of those. Um, I'd like to offer uh, the floor up to uh, select board members to ask questions. Uh, yeah. okay, I have two. Um, the Phragmites, we're still in this fiscal year. You, you can still spend that 600 now. Well, we could, but we were, because we're not working on it, we didn't know that we would get to it. Uh, and if, if that's months. possible, if we can do that until next July, I mean, if this, that money's available, then yeah, maybe we shouldn't be asking for it why, again. Why do you, you can do it until next July. That's okay. Okay. July 1st. Well, then July, June 30th. June 30th. June 30th. June 30th. In any event, <laughs> in any event. It's, that's, the, that's before we would actually need it, but if we're prudent, it's not, I mean, you can certainly purchase it in, in time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, yeah that, that would be my recommendation, given the budget picture. Yeah. Okay. Well, then, then we, we'll just scratch that and, with the understanding that this is still available, which is not unlike, in a way, the, the $500 to $5,000 for that uh, survey, which still has not been paid because the work has not been done. But she's um, indicated that next week she's hoping to get the corners uh, set and the, uh, uh, the lines marked and the plat prepared. So I'm hoping that we can finally have something done on that. But you had a second question. I had a second question, and that's about the uh, the newsletter. We mm -hmm. had a conversation last year about um, not sending it out to every member of the public, but doing some of it electronically and having some available at the stores. Mm -hmm. Did you decide for some reason that's not what you want to do? Well, it, it, it seemed that it was important, particularly since the the zoning regulations had such major changes in them that this one be made available more more broadly. It is available online. Uh, the Lakes and Streams Committee's site on the town website um, has a page where almost all of them, I guess, through the years are there, certainly in recent years, and this was, was added to it. So it is available that way, um, but you, as you've heard us say it, maybe more than we needed to, it just seems really important to have hard copies that, that seem more, that once they're in your hands, they, they seem more official and not official. And as I recall, though, all the younger people in the room said, oh, I don't look at hard copy. I just throw that right in the wastebasket. And all the older people said what you said. Yeah. Um, so I wonder if there's just a way we can reduce the cost. And we decided to put it in the stores so anybody who wanted it could get it. Yeah, I actually, I thought of this too late, but it occurred to me if people are just throwing them in the trash and the, and the post office <laughs> said what I need, we need to do is just work something out with the, the postal employees there to dig them out <laughs> <laughs> and, and find a way to, to reuse them or get them to people's hands. Right, or have a little, I know with the Hardwick phone book that everybody gets in the mail, often by the end of that week, there's a big stack of them on the counter by the mailboxes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's what we could we somehow be encourage doing, that be doing in the stores. Yeah, um, where there is a, a you know a, a post office, and you know, for example, maybe corner store. You know, just have some place over 
on the side where there would be a stack of those. But I take I take your point. I mean, it, you know, if you I, I I can't call the figures off the top of my head, but obviously if you cut down the number of uh, of uh, newsletters you're printing, then you're going to cut down the cost. Um, this uh, was for the full run of 800 and something, as I recall. And did it include postage? Because if, it you, does, were to, if yeah. you were to just plant them around <coughs> town so people could get them, you'd save that amount also. Yeah, it, it did include the, um, the postage that's done through the contractor in town with the printing office that, um, based on the, <coughs> the addresses that uh, we get from Barbara and the town office. Um, so it was, I think it was a little over $1,600 is what the... Yeah, um, that's what you have in here. Yeah, but the $1,600 is not that wouldn't have totally paid for this past year, but, you know, we, we can, there are some other groups and individuals we can try to get some money from. Uh, I've got a, a quick question. Um, the newsletter, uh, does that... We've got, uh, a, you mentioned that there's likely uh, going to be like a substantial update because of the change in, in, in regulations, but in. yeah, okay. So those, those, that's already been included um, in, in the most recent iteration. So is there a significant change year to year in, in the content? Um, the yes, content? Every, every year, um, and for many years there were two issues, uh, kind of a spring and fall issue. Mm -hmm but that's gone by the wayside. Um, but yeah, I mean, the, the, the Lakes and Streams um, Committee, um, at one of its early meetings in the year, um, decides on what's the most important issues concerning the, web, the, the lakes and streams, the waterways that we think people in town should know about. And sometimes um, it, it, it's uh, dealing with um, state laws or town regulations, mm -hmm. and sometimes it's is simply focusing on best uh, practices um, for conscientious landowners. And sometimes, as was the case in this one this year, it was both half of it, which was um, the importance of uh, buffers, and which is also reflected in its regulation and the zoning. But it's, you know, it's just on a more human, personal level, Mm -hmm. This is a good thing, and this is why you should be doing it and not cutting down all your trees along the edge of the pond and stuff. But, so, I'm, that was a long answer to what could have been. No, that's okay. Um, are there other questions for discussion uh, to be had? I mean, I think that we're all kind of considering this a, a first pass in your context and what the requests are, and then there's going to be have an, an opportunity to revisit these things um, uh, in, in a couple few weeks, uh, months, as we kind of refine the budget as we went through last year. But certainly wanted to take the opportunity to acknowledge that, you know, there's been, you know, a, a very specific drawdown of, uh, of the reserve fund. And last year, I know in this process, we uh, we made some uh, specific cuts uh, given given the budgeting climate that we were going through at that point, um, and there's a certain commitment to uh, to recognizing that and trying to restore some of uh, some of that lost uh, revenue. But um, yeah, Barbara, sorry. It's like select board's finished. I've got a couple of things. Mm -hmm. So. One, uh, if, if you didn't know, uh, I want to let you know, and if you already know, just a reminder, that the select board earlier this year approved that town boards, committees, and commissions to, can do fundraising. And so that's something that's available to the Conservation Commission to do fundraising to town voters and taxpayers and citizens if they want to financially support the Conservation Commission you can do that, and I personally would be happy to help you guys. I've got 30 years of fundraising experience. The second thing is, uh, have you considered uh, selling advertising to local businesses to help pay for sponsorship of the newsletter? Um, we, we have, 
Uh, I don't recall the details of the discussion, but or the reasons why we didn't pursue it. Mainly, it's a question of taking up space. I think if you have advertisers, you know, it, mm -hmm. is it, you know, you have to work really hard to get it within the confines of, yeah. of what you want people to know, and so. Right. I think there was a reluctance to understood, take away. but but sponsors of the newsletter could almost defray the entire cost if it, if it's done well and done right. So I just didn't know if that was something you guys had considered. Right, let's, let's talk. Okay. One interesting way to do that fundraising would be to have something in, say, this year's, saying if you were, you know, enjoyed this publication, consider supporting next year's. Mm -hmm. right? mm -hmm. so Get ahead. Yeah, that would be a, take up much less space. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, and so one one more plug, if I can, um, Larry, for further rumination. Um, uh, we didn't quite get the opportunity to do it this year, but um, but it has been uh, the intention of the of at least this board um, to meet more regularly with. Um, uh, with the committees uh, not necessarily in the budgeting process so that it doesn't always have to be a question mm -hmm. about, you know, the, the town budget, but can be uh, a dialogue about what kind of resources and uh, goals uh, the committees have or what work they're being done uh, or is being done. Um, and one of the charges that I kind of keep putting out to the uh, subcommittees um, is, uh, you know whether or not they've looked into grants um, that are specific to some of the objectives uh, of the committees that can help kind of uh, offset these um, these budget requests. Um, uh, but also, I think uh, just kind of a you know I think this is uh, an issue that resonates with so many of the residents that you know I think uh, a a report from the uh, from the commission that. Um, uh, that outlines some of the specific goals. Uh, you know, we, we've got the 30% conservation goal. Um, you know, let's quantify that. You know, what, where are we, you know, uh, relative to our conservation goals? And, and can we regularly kind of report, annually report on how, mm -hmm. how, how close we are to uh, achieving those goals? Um, uh, and then, um, you know, a, a report on, um, targeted areas uh, for uh, invasive species uh, uh, management. Um, you know, I think the, there's a lot that can be done to, um, to make the outward communication from the commission to uh, be more accessible to the community so that maybe community members can, can participate um, either independently when they have the time or, um, or to uh, join, the, join the commission and um, have, events or gatherings or particular initiatives so um well we stay we're, tuned for we're optimistic this this year that we can be more public outreach oriented than we've been for years and years and years and um the uh, town plan which i know is mm. still a long way from being finished um if if it includes at least most of the things that that we urge that be in there, it will kind of frame it. Um, mm. the, uh, just the, the basic importance about the science uh, uh, that mm. explains why certain areas uh, do need to be protected more than others, for instance. Um, if you're steeped in this stuff, you kind of assume, well, everybody knows that, but everybody doesn't know, know that. And then a discussion about the very difficult um, question of, can we actually conserve properties? Um, be, because there's a question about whether the land trusts at this point have the capacity to process these things mm -hmm. statewide. The Vermont Land Trust has had to drop off or, or build up, cut a, a, a floor on the size of the properties. They're now saying it has to be 250 acres or more, and that's just you may have it may have come up here previously that's because they've got to process each track as though it were a big track and so it, right. it's very expensive to do that with a lot of little ones so, but but that's i don't know i don't know what's happening at the state level uh 
with uh, Act 59's uh, implementation, a, a lot of it is, is, is still uh, at the, um, in the lap of the uh, Housing Conservation Board and A&R to, uh, to try to deal with these questions, but that's an ongoing problem that everybody's aware of, which is the capacity to actually hold these um, easements. And that's one of the things we'd like to talk about too, which may be a more targeted thing with landowners who actually have some of these large tracts um, and find a way that, to start a conversation with, with them, the ones that don't have easements on their large forest properties. <coughs> Thanks. Thanks again, Larry. Um, we'll try to find some time uh, to kind of collect some of that feedback and, uh, and find an opportunity to have, have you back in uh, to talk about those specifically. Sure, we would love to, to do that. It, 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 for one thing, it it's um, right in with our sort of outreach programs anyway, we need that outreach for you guys. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> well, uh, thanks for the time, Larry. Um, and uh, I guess I'll, I'll recommend that folks, um, if questions come up, we'll send them to Barbara or Kari um, so that we can kind of get those registered uh, when we take a look at the whole budget. Um, but for now, I'd like to move on to uh, the cemetery commission. Thank, Thank you, you, Larry. Thank you. <clears throat> yes. Michael Fuller, the current chair of the commission. All I have to say is if we don't get the money we want, we're letting the zombies out. <laughs> <laughs> well, the first big thing is that the three contracts we have with our sexton have not increased. They will be the same this coming fiscal year as they are now. The big things are our two special projects. The town notes that over the last two years, the fences at the Robinson Cemetery and at the Old West Church Cemetery got replaced. That, I don't have the exact numbers on, but I think it was something over $30,000 for those two fences. They're in historic districts. We don't have a choice. What's there has got to be replaced with what's there. We managed to get the Robinson fence painted at no cost to the town beyond the materials. Union 32 sent their whole football team over there and they were great. They had a heck of a good time. And they want to come back again. So we hope that they're going to come back for a couple of sessions and paint the fence at Old West Church, which looks great, by the way. It's a, it's a lovely fence. It's a very complicated fence. So we have got in our budget $10,000 to paint that fence, which is probably, might not be enough to paint that fence if it had to be done with hired labor. If the U32 team comes over and they paint that fence and other people show up, which they have, we've got that money not used, it will simply roll over into the next year's budget. We could take it out and hope that we get the volunteer labor to do it. But if we don't, we're going to have to hire somebody. We are charged with maintaining the fences, and if we fail to do that, whether you guys realize it or not, we can all be fined $400 a piece for failing to maintain the fences. <laughs> Those two fences died from deferred maintenance. The other expense is the wooden fence at the Ainsworth Cemetery. We wanted to put up a post and chain fence. The posts are already there. Um, maybe the most unfortunate word we use is plastic chain, which until you walk up and touch it, you can't tell it's not an iron chain. People complain. A couple of people came to our meeting and vocally complained. This has always been a wood fence. We know the people that used to build and maintain that fence. We want it to stay the way it was. So we did a survey. We got 91 responses, and somebody told me that's an incredible number of people for a town this size. Two thirds of them said, we want a wood fence, we don't care what it costs. So this is our budget, we put it up at town meeting, if people don't want to pay for it, they can tell us they don't want to pay for it. But that's, that's what it is for now. So I guess the big question is what you, the board, decide should be done with that $10,000 painting estimate. Do you want to leave it in there? And if we don't use it, roll it over? Or do you want to take it out and hope that everything goes well and we don't have to retroactively ask for money? Uh, other than that, supplies in 
anticipate the cost of, of um, paint, brushes, rollers, and so forth for the painting. And the miscellaneous, we raised a little bit because the last year or so we had a bunch of things that happened we didn't expect, like trees coming down across the entrance to the Poplar Hill Cemetery that had to be cut out, um, a tree then another cemetery that may have to be cut down, that sort of thing. We never know what's, what's going to happen. And a note on burial expenses. We have given up budgeting for burial expenses. We don't know who's going to die or how they're going to be buried. But the fact is, we pay our section less to bury somebody than we charge to have them buried. So we actually make a little bit of money on a burial. So there's just no way to put it in the budget and know what it's going to be. Assume that if people continue to die, we're going to continue to make money. <laughs> Well, it's hard to argue with that, Rancher. I think you're safe here, yeah. Uh, as for fundraising, you're talking to Larry about, I don't know what we could do, you know, planning to die, consider Talus as you're finding rest. <laughs> so that's basically what we've got. I think that $6,800, the taxpayers say they want to spend that. So we put it in the budget. The 10000 <coughs> I'd like to hear what you guys say. We meet on the 20th of this month for the last time this year, so we can finalize on you. Uh, we'll let Ann go first, and, okay. yeah, yes. and then uh, uh, Kari, Kari and Jeff. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so the 16,000 is for the cemetery fence? Yes. It, 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 the the 10,000 10, is for painting the Old West Church fence. And the 6,800 is to replace the wooden fence at Ainsworth Cemetery. Old West Church, and then oh, it's for the town. Oh, okay. I'm just thinking about how that would show up because the way we seem to have shown this in the past, in the town, the budget we present to the town is just one item, really, cemetery appropriation. I wondered what it would be like to break out that piece separately so that the town could divide the question. Yeah, we can And vote on whether or not we'll go with the plastic fence. Exactly. I mean, um, as I understand it, um, at town meeting, if somebody wants to, they can present a motion that say, we take this amount out of the cemetery association budget. Yeah. You're free to do that. Yeah, but they have to be able to see the budget first, and the way yeah. we present it to them, they don't see it. So. Yeah, and this, the way I've got it here is kind yeah. of the way we would put it in the town report, so they can see what that 10,000 is, what the 6,800 is. Yeah. Not just the thing that says appropriations, which could be anything. Mm -hmm. Is the, the supplies, the 2,500, does that include paint for both cemetery expenses? No, uh, only for the Old West Church fence because it's pressure treated lumber. It has to wait a year before we paint okay. it. So the paint for that cemetery would be in the next year's budget. Uh, go ahead, Christine. Yeah, I just have a question about the post and chain. If we did that, what would, when is the price difference? Uh, if we were to do it with chain, I believe the section said $1,800. $5,000 less. Five thousand. And that was in the survey that we did. We gave both prices. So and would you actually, sorry. I'm sorry. On the survey, when you say survey, was I saw something in Front Porch Forum. Did you do a survey? Like send something to everyone in town? Or was it? We did it on a Front Porch Forum, and I believe it was posted at the usual places okay. in town where things are notified. Okay. Okay, thank you. Uh, Carter? Yeah, my, my question was, did you consider doing the two special projects over two years? Is that feasible at all? The painting should be done now because it will, by next summer, have been two years since that fence was put up. The uh, Ainsworth fence, how long are people willing to put up on the fact that there's no fence there at all? And part of why I ask that is that um, I believe you told me that after these two projects, there's there's really not going to be many special projects in the, in the future. There will not be a whole lot. We have some wood fences at Fairview that will need to be painted. Um, we got a, a, the back side of the fence at Fairview Cemetery is on the ground anyway. Someday we're going to have to take that away. 
But these fences are the last major projects that we're facing. We would be pretty much down to regular maintenance. I hate to cast aspersions on previous iterations of the board, but there was a lot of delayed maintenance that went on. And we're catching up. Uh, Barbara, you had a question? Yeah, just a reminder that if for any reason the U32 football team doesn't come through for you, you're not limited to football. They have hockey and basketball <laughs> and, and cross country. Athletics. Boys and girls football. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. No, the 32 is very anxious to get their students out doing community That's service. Great. Right. I mean, Tegan was instrumental in getting me hooked up with the people I needed to to do this. So Tegan's disappeared. That's Tegan's phone right there. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh. And how much are we paying her? <laughs> Let's look at that. Looks like East yeah. Cal yeah. Village, yeah. doesn't yeah. it? Yeah, so uh, I, I think you. probably we are going to get the help we need from U32. Um, assuming there still is a U32 and that Callus is still a part of it. Recording assumptions. Well, knowing that there's a, a, that there's a, a drive for uh, getting the students to do uh, community outreach stuff and community service, I'm, you know, can we get them under contract somehow? Like, can we? <laughs> Uh, <laughs> do they plow? Work with them. <laughs> <laughs> or pulling bases? Yeah, that yeah, guy Pulling bases, there you go. Um, so the uh, disbursement from the T. Rowe Price account, is that specifically to offset some of these yeah, uh, I, for this year? That account exists to reduce the money that we have to ask the taxpayers for. And right. it is a set percentage of the value of the endowment. And as of, what, Carrie, November 1st, that is the amount that we are allowed to take out. I see. We can take out less, but we can take out no more than that. Testing. So add right. that to the bottom line, and we'd, we'd be looking for 68.9, not right. 67.9. No, thanks. thanks for that clarification. Um, are there any uh, any other questions for for now on the cemetery question budget? Thank you. Okay. Let me ask you one more question. Do you want to hear about the current fiscal year budget, which is over fifteen thousand dollars in the hole? Uh, that that seems uh, like something that we should uh, hear about. Yeah. Yeah. That is a result of two big bills that we got that we did not anticipate, one of which we probably should have anticipated. Some time ago, before I was involved, there was a, a, an agreement that the Sexton would take one cemetery every year and go through it and clean stones, set up fallen or tilted stones, and repair broken stones. Apparently, Nobody ever told him that he should clear it with us first. We got a bill for $6,300 for doing all of that work in Poplar Hill Cemetery. It looks great, it needed to be done, but we didn't know it was being done. The second is a bill for $9,300 we got for buying and installing corner markers. When we sell a plot, we require that there are corner markers on that plot. Up until now, when we sold the plot, it included the price of corner markers purchase and installation. But the rules say that whole price has to go into the endowment, which means we have to come up with the price of the markers and their installation out of our budget. Nobody was paying attention to that, and suddenly the section sends us a bill for the last two and a half years worth of stones. Now, we are trying to negotiate with the trustees of public funds. Kari and I and Rod Buck of that group are going to try to get together and talk about this and say the purpose of this fund is to reduce the money that we have to ask taxpayers for. Since the cost of those stones went into that endowment fund, can we take it back out? My first 
the result of the question to him was no. But we want to talk about it further. If that's the case, then that $9,300 will reduce the value of our endowment, but it will wipe out that huge expense. Other than that, I have no clue where the money's going to come from because none of those bills are in any of the budgets we have so far. Uh, moving forward, do we need to be capturing that in the in the budget if we can't get approval to uh, to withdraw that? And it sounds like that's an adjustment that we might have to make in the budget to make sure that that expense is, is covered for the future. Right. I will know hopefully sometime this coming week. Okay. Because I haven't. I mean, up until now, it's been all kinds of things going on, the elections, the holiday, and so forth. Mm -hmm. So this week, I have to get hold of Rod Buck and see if he and Carrie can meet and answer that question. And then I can let the select board know what we find up with. Okay. Yeah, or Kari can. Yeah, I mean, that'll be sure. um, yeah. something. Well, information will be a prize, too. So. But yes. other than that, once we get through this fiscal year, next year, seems to be not a problem, assuming we don't get any hurricanes or zombie apocalypses. I think we I will can't speak to any of those things. <laughs> like that, so. I think after that we'll be on a pretty level period and we should be able to not have any big surprises. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for your work. Uh, and yeah, absolutely. Thank you for the work, and and thanks for uh, digging into the budgets, <laughs> um, and and finding uh, bring those things to our uh, attention. Um, if, and any decision is what the board thinks about that ten thousand dollar painting estimate. I mean, ultimately, it's I guess it's our decision. We can put anything we want in there, and the voters can either say, "Yeah, we'll pay for that," or "No, we won't." But we'd like to know what the select board thinks about it. Everything I heard from various people with any knowledge of how it all went down was that they really enjoyed it, the school was really happy with it, and they intended to do it again. My inclination would be to cut that 10000 from the budget on the assumption that we could If not get them, some other team. Right. Yeah. Or at least a portion of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, 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 I am. You know, I, I think we're dealing with a, a fairly acute issue of uh, of deferred maintenance, and and there's still some out, outstanding decision uh, to be made, I guess, by by the town. I think that the idea of a split vote is uh, is, is an interesting one um, uh, for town meeting, um, and and that would you know kind of play into uh, the need for regular uh, budgeting for uh, for painting because that would be a whole new um, wood fence you know I think you know knowing that fences don't need to be paint, painted annually um, it, it would be good to see you know some sort of maintenance uh, line item that kind of amortizes those those expenses over yeah. multiple years so mm -hmm. it, it didn't have to be you know a, a ten thousand dollar consideration uh, this year, but then probably not again until another couple of years forward. I think it just kind of would would kind of even out the budget a little bit. Um, and if there are other if there are other maintenance issues that um, that there are already expenses that that come up, like the sixty eight hundred dollars, it it can kind of take all of that into consideration. But you know I, that's not necessarily a a judgment on whether it should be there or shouldn't be there this year, you know, that, that's just kind of my observation at the moment. Um. Well, if I can add one thing, um, I was thinking about this a few days ago. What would be the reaction to the idea that we add another amount in our budget every year to go into a maintenance fund that would not be touched by anything except maintenance. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So if we put in a thousand or fifteen hundred dollars a year mm -hmm. for five or six or seven years, the next time mm -hmm. somebody needs to replace something, there'd be a fund there. Right. Yeah. It would not come out yes. of any 
regular maintenance. Yeah, that's a very good idea. I, I think that that's a great idea, and, and you know, I think creating a fund like that one gives line of sight on you know any kind of accrued balances. It uh, you know it kind of earmarks funds that can be put towards that um, that can be offset by volunteer labor, um, and uh, and if at some point you know it looks like there's enough of a balance to carry over, I, you know, I think that's a great way of handling it, um, and certainly is something that we can um, that we can create. As you're describing, it's good to have predictable, consistent yeah. amounts, and with these special projects, you know, large amounts, yeah. you're, you're having having this fund really help with that. Yeah. Because if I said once we get this other fence done, we're going to be pretty level maintenance for a while. So if we were accumulating X dollars a year, mm -hmm. yeah, it would help. But you know, to to your point, the maintenance of the stones is it's a requirement. I don't know exactly where that obligation falls, but I, I'm familiar enough with it. You know, I, have, I know folks that, that perform maintenance, and that obligation, I believe, falls uh, falls on the uh, on the town or the you know the property owner essentially to to make sure that the monumentation is is maintained and then. In good good condition. Um, so you know, my my guess is at the very least there's going to be recurring costs um, of of having to uh, to perform that maintenance um, that we're going to have to account for. Um, so if we were to maintenance. take out that ten thousand dollars and replace it with a new line in the budget that says, I would you call it maintenance fund or whatever, whatever you should be called, and put like $2,000 into mm -hmm. that and try to do that every year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think that, that that sounds about right. But voters would have to create, you know, authorize the creation of the funds mm -hmm. this first year. Yeah. Like, yeah. Whatever that would have to be an item on the agenda. Yeah, yeah. 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 separate agenda item yeah. after the budget saying, will yeah. the voters agree to create a fund? Yeah. yeah. Like we do for the fire department or right. anybody mm -hmm. else. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And we could vary the amount year by year depending on right. what we got. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. I like that. Okay, well, thank you. Thank you again. Great. Mm -hmm. Great. Great conversation. Um, and we'll uh, move on to other other budgetary discussion. Um, thank you. All right, time for a whiskey. Uh, yeah. <laughs> where? Where? <laughs> 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 um, yeah, yeah. And now it's the medical insurance. Yeah. All right. So, uh, so I finally had a chance to dig into this last week, and everybody knows that Blue Cross Blue Shield. Yeah, is increasing their rates 23%. So that's just, and that, those are the numbers that I plugged into the draft, you know, the budget worksheet. Um, while well, I had time to look at MVP plus signal. And um, just, you know, just to preface this by saying we're not alone, obviously. Mm -hmm. Blue Cross is one of the two carriers in, in, in the state. And if you get a chance, I recommend reading an article that's on the cover of seven days. Yeah. Because it really summarizes where we are, mm -hmm. not not just with insurance, but with healthcare in Vermont. And it's it's pretty sobering. So um, uh, MVP is running about eleven percent less. And the, the they offer a plan that's actually identical. I didn't realize that, but it's the standard standard gold plan is yeah. it's, it's identical across the board. So um, Based on that, I asked the employees that are currently um, receiving coverage uh, to do a little research, uh, commenting on where there are differences, which could be in the network mm -hmm. of providers and uh, then the formula rate, which is the prescriptions. And so I provided um, ways to research that. And, and you know, specifically, people should be looking at you know their providers yeah, right. and the prescriptions mm -hmm. that they and their family are taking. So. Um, I, I sent that out last week. I've gotten a couple, you know, favorable responses. I okay. guess. I mean, no one's thrilled about changing, right? Yeah. But, but and, and hopefully, there's understanding. But I did ask them to provide feedback by the 25th, so that we could have that when we discuss next. So that, I, I think we just it has to be on the table. It's such a driver in this 
particular budget. Yeah. Um, yeah. So so that's that's kind of it. Oh, the other thing I was going to say is Barbara. I think you put out an email to the listserv for clerks, and so we did get some feedback about other towns that have are on MVP. Mm -hmm. Towns that have moved from Blue Cross to MVP, a couple towns that have bounced back and forth depending on rates. So it, it, that gave me some assurance that it's, it's not it's, we're not making a dreadful mistake by changing if we decide to do that. Um, there, there at least was one town that, that was uh, frustrated with the service that was being provided by MVP that went back. But I think there are probably people that are frustrated with Blue Cross as well. Yeah. So it's just it's it's just. What about administrative costs on your side? Is that a hard to, thing to change? To change, yeah. I, I don't think so. Uh, I I do think that given where we are in the year, e even before the twenty fifth, I'll start working on an application because mm -hmm. that's going to take some time. That that would be the cost of our time. Cost your time. That's I don't think there's any kind of run out. Well, I, actually, I need to I need to understand yeah. that because there there probably would be a run out actually where whereby you're paying. You get into um, January, February, you're paying for for um, uh, costs that were in, uh, incurred during the year, during the, the, the calendar year. So, um, yeah. So, I don't know. Questions or comments about that? Um, well, I I want to. You know, I think that it's fairly straightforward, but I, I want to at least say, you know, that I appreciate the work that you're doing and doing the analysis and then also, you know, doing that analysis with the input from the uh, town employees. This is a, uh, this is a really hard thing for a lot of people to understand, you know, uh, speaking, uh, you know, from the perspective of an employer that you need needs to communicate these things and, and they have real impacts. Um, you know, I've been through this and, and healthcare is near and dear to people. So yeah, absolutely. They, they, you know, there could be a lot of anxiety about change and uh, what that's going to mean for them and their loved ones. So, um, But you are hearing preliminarily that people's providers are on MVP. Yeah, Tegan gave feedback saying, you know, my provider is in there, so that looks good to me. Um, you know, give people more of a chance, but yeah, uh, yeah we've gotten some, some reasonable feedback. Okay. Uh, yeah, and just, you know, big picture, this doesn't bode well for the education budget no. either. No. Right? This is, so, mm -hmm. yeah. It's, uh -huh. So, anyway, um, just going to the budget overall, you know, I've now plugged in everything we've heard so far, including cemetery and, and uh, conservation are in this budget worksheet. I, um, I also, based on our, our discussion about town administrator, road commissioner, treasurer, just feeling like something's going to have to give there, I, I went ahead and put in a full-time treasurer at 60000 Just since that was the model that was you know, adopted in 2023, we can still discuss it. But that's putting us at 11% increase for general government and 20 for the highway department. And it's being driven by staffing and equipment, right? Which were the, the two things that you identified last year, but it's pretty stark this year. Um, and, you know, it, the equipment, you know, is basically set. We're, we're, we sign those contracts. We, you know, we, we have debt that we have to service, right? So I, I, I guess I don't want to be too grim about it, but I, I, I think we're going to have to really consider staffing, and especially staffing where it impacts benefits, because that's, that's such a big part of it. So, you know, last year's, the, the, this year's current budget would have benefited from having three full-time highway department staff and then some part-timers, and that was the model we were using, and that, that really helps when it comes to the medical insurance and the other benefits. Um, yeah, yeah, and I guess, that, I mean, I can go through now that we have this sort of lay of the land and get more specific about where I think the reduction should happen. I also think that we should do the exercise that we did last year, line by line by line. Mm -hmm. But I think you're gonna see, if we're, if we're talking about reducing 
And you should also be thinking about what's our target. But if we're talking about reducing 10% of this budget, I, 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 there's no way to avoid talking about staffing. Mm. Can I ask a, a question about that? I, I was a little confused about why you created a separate treasurer's position. I thought you were happy doing both positions. Well, it's not about me. It's about like what's you know what's the. It could it could be, it, there's there's I think it needs to be separate positions. Whether that's you know the town administrator is is the treasurer or the town administrator is the road commissioner. Just something needs needs to happen there. That is a is unfortunately an extra staff person we couldn't ill afford it, but I don't I don't see how, like as we discussed, I, I can continue to doing all these roles mm -hmm. or anybody. Right. Um, okay. um, okay. Yeah. So so I think I think that how it's set up is is up for discussion, but mm -hmm. some sort of separation of duties seems yeah. called for. Yeah. Okay. And I you know, and I just plug it over. Mm -hmm. And do you think we need a full time treasurer? Because before you took you you took absorb that into your function, which first of all, thank you, Car. You've just been an extraordinary gift to this town for the last year, and we want to thank you. But I also know you doing all three jobs is not sustainable. I, I'm amazed you've been able to keep up with it at this point. But if we pull the treasurer position away from your job duties, which is what it sounds like you're recommending, does it really require a full-time treasurer? Yeah, maybe not. Uh, and that's where you get into so st a strategic decision about who can you um, who can you get, who can you hire on a, a mm -hmm. part-time basis or a, mm -hmm. sort of a lower-end uh, full-time financial position, you know. I'm not really sure, but um, one thing that, you know, and, and this is really in the sort of the brainstorming realm is, I think Woodbury was hiring a treasurer recently, and, you know, we're at the scale where it would be a full-time job to be a treasurer for two places, or or to offer, the town of Calus to offer, you know, treasury services to another town. Mm. I, you know, I throw that out there, not even knowing where to begin having that conversation, but... That's the kind of thing, you know, towns in Vermont are going to have to reckon with at some point. We also talked about um, hiring a bookkeeper. You know, the administrator could sort of be the treasurer, but have a bookkeeper who uh, would uh, take on uh, a huge uh, amount of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, and I think that's, that's what we budgeted for this last year, was, a, was, a, was an assistant treasurer uh, to, to do payroll and accounts payable on a part-time basis. And I think that model could work, but I, I, I worry that asking your town administrator to, to hold title of treasurer and road commissioner and town administrator mm -hmm. is, is it's, and it, and, you know, to some extent it's me, but um, mm -hmm. that's just, that's too much. I don't, I, I can't own all that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and I, and I think it's important to note, it's probably not uh, appropriate to like, get down the road on this uh, particular subject now uh, or, or tonight, but uh, you know, I think specific to your role and your performance, uh, there's, uh, there's, there's a need to consider the structure uh, and the approach for the road commissioner. Uh, yeah. And you know, if I look existentially at uh, at the uh, <laughs> the core functions uh, and uh, skill sets for a treasurer uh, and and a town administrator, uh, uh, those are professional skills that are more closely aligned to each other um, within their job descriptions than than the road commissioner one, which is as we found in a number of dialogues around this subject for the last two and a half years is that it's really hard to get the skill sets that you need in in a road commissioner um, uh, and and pair that with some of the other uh, professional skills uh, that just kind of get added on um, to that to that particular uh, job description that we've come up with for um, town administrator so you know I, I, my concern <coughs> is that uh, We'll need to start 
having a conversation around that uh, and and picking a path. Um, right. Right. And um, want to have maybe a conversation about how how we go about performing that analysis a little bit and uh, and and brainstorming what those uh, what those paths could be. Um, uh, does anybody have any thoughts or ideas about how to structure that? Or want to volunteer for a special project? So, well, Kari, you were going to kind of look into that. You said you were going to have a conversation with Toby. And we, yeah, Andrew. Jordan and I met with Toby. Uh, uh, okay. Good discussion. I mean, I think, um, you, know, you know, there were a couple things. One is, you know, the model could include leaning on the road foreman more, so that they're doing more of the customer service, more of the, um, you know, taking in the requests, and then, um, but you, you, at the end of the day, you still need a manager. You need someone who's in charge of personnel, you know, when there are conflicts, which there are going to be conflicts, someone has to, to, to own, own the situation and make the call, and then, you know, be accountable for that. Um, so I, I don't, I don't think the, the forming only gets you so far, mm -hmm. and then you know Toby's, Toby said, well in the past it was a select board member, and you know that you know, for obvious reasons that's not you know a great model, <laughs> and yet and yet it's not a full time position necessarily. So it's, it's it's somewhat akin to the treasurer that like you can you can do it in less than forty hours if that's your only function. So then how to combine these things at our scale is our own. Trick. And I, I sort of tend to agree with you, Jordan, that, that the town administrator kind of fits with treasure a little more, but I have a bias about it. And I don't want you to create the model based on me. I don't think I'm not going to be here forever, and I just want to kind of make the, the best decision I can. But I think in a lot of ways, as we talk about along, it kind of does fit better with the treasurer position because it's that sort of admin computer administrative aspect whereas the road commissioner is really a dramatically different skill set. That's what I found. Yeah. I think. Well in terms of other towns and how other towns do it, I mean it's it's not uncommon to have an administrator treasurer. Is it? I'm not sure. I mean, it's not uncommon to have a clerk who's a treasurer. <laughs> I think you would have to be smaller than us to really yeah. make that work. Although they've right. been doing it that way in uh, Marshfield for years. Right? So anyway, um, yeah, I think they're you know, and I'm starting to see a lot more advertisement for town administrator. I think this is a relatively new <laughs> phenomenon that that's catching on because it's just you, know, you can only ask the select board to do so much. Mm -hmm. and, and I think you can only ask a town manager to do so much. I, I mean, part of the problem is that the town manager uh, uh, is statutorily con constrained. Um, and, and I think that's why a lot of towns are really struggling with it as they try to navigate how, how to staff appropriately for, for the demands and the responsibilities of the role without, without the uh, statutory obligation uh, to uh, to largely deal with the road commissioner issue, like that—that that is the big issue, and um, it, it, it needs a lot of conversation, um, and it's a really hard thing to figure out. I'm, I'm almost curious. Like originally, when we were talking about some of these positions and roles and responsibilities, that we were thinking about a town administrator having an assistant town uh, administrator position um, that. Uh, that could offload some some of that, uh, and and I'm wondering if that is uh, something that at some point would uh, would have the road commissioner management element to it, you know, um, yeah. uh, as well as like a, as a fully baked uh, part time position. Um, but uh, you know, I think the, the staffing then comes down to then you have the staff management issue as well, and. And I'm wondering, you know, are there ways to kind of delineate staffing-related responsibilities so that you have somebody who is kind of the arbiter of 
conflict negotiation as in, but you still have somebody who, who is responsible for kind of like this oversight of scheduling and, and just kind of uh, more, in, more in a daily supervision um, or not even supervision because we have a road foreman, but, yeah. Yeah. Um, but somebody who's just kind of um, a finger on the pulse for that that level of managerial um, responsibility or or frankly the, the you know the customer service element of it you know so uh, they're they're picking up that um, that element which is I know is fairly time consuming so again the question is where where do we find the time to talk about that and figure it out um, and uh, do we do we have the runway to work through that dialogue uh, relative to this budget um, process um, and feeling like we probably don't. Um, I, I wonder if we make that line item somehow not as specific as uh, treasurer, part-time treasurer, and we call it, you know, we call it something else so that we have, at least have it earmarked and give ourselves the flexibility to make a decision that we know you're going to need to make sometime mm -hmm. in, in the next few months, but. Um, yeah. Well, there's, you know, that sort of goes to the placeholder idea. I mean, the town, you can, you can look at our budgets and you can see that we've been veering. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's been really on the highway department side. We've had a director of public works, right? right? And then we've had a road commissioner and then we've had an assistant road commissioner. You know, we've tried different models over the years and then what we're thinking in terms of at, at the budget time is not necessarily what happens a year later. Mm -hmm. Would there be any potential for sharing a road commissioner with another town? I was thinking specifically of Marshfield where Bobby's planning to retire. She's doing treasurer and road commissioner and town clerk. Um, they're not going to be able to sustain that with a new person. Yeah. Maybe we can have a conversation yeah, with them. Yeah, that's the next like conversation to have. I, I, that's fascinating to me that one person can do all those things. Um, yeah, it's, it, you know, ultimately, I, I feel like, you, you know, if we're talking about regionalization or whatever, it's the, it's the roads. That's, that's where, because it, partly because what makes the road commissioner so different is you have to have a knowledge of mm -hmm. road construction and equipment. And I mean, it's just a totally different set of issues from, you know, off the office work. So, um, so, so some sharing does make sense in terms of, of, of the management of our highway departments. However, that it seems very fraught. In some ways, like taking care of someone's accounts payable and, and payroll is one thing. Being responsible for somebody else's roads, it's so, I mean, it's, it's, it's gonna be challenging. Two things, one, you mentioned Marshfield. I wonder if Paul Stecker is still on the road crew in Marshfield. He's not. He's not. Yeah. Okay. All right. David Delcor has a comment. It's, it's right know, in the chat box. That's my. That, that's I, my. Yeah, look in the chat box. Oh. Okay. Right. Bobby is a legend. <laughs> <laughs> that's Tegan's comment. Oh, oh, it came up under David's name. I do. It's unintentional. I'm sorry. Anyway. <clears throat> <clears throat> nice <to> meet <laughs> <laughs> um, well, uh, thanks uh, for digging into that a little bit. Yeah. And, and, and I, I, one other thing I wanted to raise tonight, I mentioned this a couple times, and it's interesting that the idea of a new reserve fund came up just now. I mentioned this a couple times that we should at least think about two other reserve funds this year. One would be the garage. I, I, I just, oh, it's kind yeah. of shocking that we don't have one. Yeah, and, yeah. And, it's, it's, it's just long overdue. And the other one is around the East Montpelier Fire Department facility, mm -hmm. because as the discussion has been going, we're gonna be on the hook potentially for bills when a boiler, you know, a capital item goes down and you know, we get one third of the bill. And right now we don't have any allocation, we don't have any reserves. You know, if that were to happen to us, it would just be deficit spending. So it seems like something, doesn't have to be, a large amount. In fact, I have no illusions. If we set this up, it would be very modest this first year. Mm -hmm. But kind of one of the things I want is to get it there and have it as a reminder to future select boards and staff yeah. that we, we ought to be allocating to this. 
And then specifically, if I remember that this correctly, um, East Montpelier does have a reserve fund. They said they did. That. At least they yeah. said they did. I don't know if it's as formal, but it can't be a reserve fund without it being uh, adopted by the by the voters. So, so does it make sense to put something in and, yeah. and just get us started on that? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Great. Thank you. Um, so um, upcoming budget, we have. The sheriff will be here in two weeks, so that should be an interesting conversation. The calendar that's in the memo has an error. We're not going to do social services next time because the deadline for applications is until December, so we'll do, deal with that in December. And then we've got the fire departments, both of them coming in in a month. So that, and then we'll have spoken with everybody, I think. Um, we're still waiting on other insurances and, and dues, but. Um, we're, we're getting to the place where we have to start because we're, mm -hmm. the hard part is about yeah. to start. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and we do have the results of the doodle poll, so we are uh, zeroing in on. Uh, yeah, that's actually it's over agenda. Yeah, okay. the agenda. Yeah, meeting. Perfect. Yeah. Um, so then we've got a uh, discussion of town uh, town report and, uh, running behind schedule a little bit. Um, so uh, we don't, I guess, necessarily need to uh, assign uh, all of the different items. Uh, this is largely being driven by a uh, uh, practice that, uh, that we, or approach that we took last year in preparation. We had so many different things and such a new select board that we kind of divvied up the various areas of, uh, of reporting. Um, and I guess not really feeling like we have all that much uh, to uh, to report on, and uh, I was wondering if we want to uh, take a poll for anybody who'd be interested in maybe drafting a, a more generalized select board update for the town plan. So you're thinking less than what the select board covered? And certainly, I can take the roads part. There's no reason for you. You're responsible for that. Right, yeah. Last year we had uh, some co road commissioners uh, who contributed to uh, the road section um, because we didn't have somebody in that in that role uh, and there was a lot to discuss. Um, uh, we also had uh, an IT section that, uh, that I uh, contributed to, which was uh, a pretty significant change in internal systems and, and workings. Um, uh, and I believe, uh, and you did the, the did broader the summary, yeah, and the rest of it. Um, yeah. But this year, uh, the, the topics um, are a little bit fewer. Um, yeah, I don't feel as on top of it. I mean, I, I was so intimately involved that last year. I don't feel as on top of it this year. Maybe with help from staff, I could help put it together. But sure, we could um, come up with a list. And yeah. Also, one of the things that I I was proud of last year was talk the, where we talked about what our priorities were for the budget, mm -hmm. and we're not ready to, put, to do that yet. But we could put a placeholder for it, I suppose. So I see it being a bit easier for you this year because we didn't have the major flooding that we had in July of 2023. Uh, we don't need to talk so much about FEMA. Uh, I, I invited the CPA to submit another report this year, even though they're not an official town board, select board appointed. They're finishing up the dam, so they'll do that, the dam part of it. Last year, you were re doing staff reorganization. We did this whole org chart. You guys had a lot to talk about last year. Then we'll simplify it this year. Well, it will and it won't. You know, I think that there, there as this last conversation kind of unfolded, uh, there's still a lot to figure out. And, um, you know, I think the, the dialogue around staffing um, is, is an important one. Um, uh, and maybe rather than a, a recap of decisions that have been made and, and structures that have been kind of assigned, that it might be worth 
you know, reinforcing um, the commitment to making sure that we're staffed appropriately and according to the, mm -hmm. the needs of the town. Um, and that, you know, there's going to be an ongoing dialogue about, about how we, uh, how we staff the town and, uh, and the scope of the responsibilities, uh, that, that the staff is required to cover. I mean, I think that that's, as well as, you know, I think highlighting, um, what expenses come with that and the exposure that that opens us up to, uh, relative to the insurance costs that, mm -hmm. that increase, um, you know, we can't have one without the other, and I think it, any any effort we can uh, put into communicating that um, is is the best we can do, really. Um, now I'm I'm going to be gone uh, for a month. <laughs> um, for most of that time, I'll be electronically connected, but not for a week of it. Um, so I will be back till mid-January. Okay. So that might make it hard for me to do this, actually. Hmm. What is the timing on this report? Is there a... Well, the requested due date is December 15th. But... Huh. That's... That, I, I hesitate to say that that has flexibility. <laughs> 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 Articulate it, but there is a, 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 a drop dead um, deadline that is uh, that is later than that uh, for sure. But um, uh, yeah, it, uh, by December fifteenth seems really ambitious relative to the dialogue that needs to be had around the budget um, and uh, and everything else. Um, I'm hesitant to uh, commit to the. Uh, Staffing, communicate part. Of. Well, would it make any sense to divvy it up into budget and a summary of the past year mm -hmm. and you know sort of and, projects and? And I'd like to recommend a looking forward section yeah. Yeah. because this this board has been so forward thinking that I think it'd be great to emphasize that in the town report that you're working, you're looking to really work more closely with all the town boards, committees, and commissions. Yeah, we're going to have a new town plan and, we're, and that you guys are looking forward to where the direction the town is headed. table some further uh, discussion on that uh, until we can kind of define what those uh, those areas of input are going to be um, and uh, make a call for uh, people signing up uh, for specific things uh, where they feel inclined or motivated or willing. Or we'll draw straws, we'll put names in the hat, we'll do whatever we need to do. Um, but I've taken some notes on some of the topics um, so far, and we'll, we'll put that list together. Um, okay, move on to uh, Curtis Pond Dam update. Yeah, things are moving along. We postponed the staining of the concrete Excellent to next decision. year. <laughs> um, it's a was a sort of a challenging decision because. We'll have to lower the pond a bit next year at some point in order to do it. Um, so we were hoping to do it this year, but with um, the timing and the temperature and the required curing times of the concrete before staining it, just there's no way it's going to happen. Um, but the work is really drawing to a close. The um, bank on the high side has been regraded, they sort of created, you know, recreated their lawn, um, their steps are in, things are, today they assembled the um, low water outlet valve assembly, which was giving them some trouble last week, but that's all in place now. Um, they're removing, you know, everything's backfilled, they're removing the gravel road, I expect in the next 
couple of days they'll start rewatering the cove um, and we'll see water. The, there's masons there uh, started today doing the stone walls that line the spillway. Um, so it's really starting to look like it's gonna look forever. Um, there's still several weeks, a couple of weeks of odds and ends and site cleanup and they have to put AstroTurf down on the top between the old and the new dam. Um, so it's not, it's not done done, but they're um, expected to be, they're supposed to be out of the water Friday. Um, although there was one of the documents we were sent said Friday, one said the following Friday. And so it's a little wishy-washy, but it'll definitely be in the next, you know, if not by this Friday, early next week, that they'll be out of the water and substantially complete. And the, we're still waiting on some numbers. I have a little concern that our DNK budget might um, expand a tiny bit um, based on some personnel things and who's doing what monitoring. Um, but I think, you know, the last sources and uses we were expecting, looking like we were about, what, 42,000 over budget total, uh, and the concrete work has come in somewhere between 40 and 45,000 under budget. Mm -hmm. um, so I think there's a, a chance very close. we're going to come in right on budget. Um, and the CPA received the final 100000 of the loan. I don't know if Marge didn't bring you a check, did she? So we'll, we'll be, we're just, I think, waiting for it to clear accounts and we'll get a check in the next couple of days. Great. And, and how's the fundraising going for repaying the loans? It's good. It's been a little slow. Per, I've been really busy. Um, <laughs> But we're going to do a mailing, sort of as soon as it's substantially complete, we're going to do a mailing to all, I forget, six or seven hundred people who have donated previously um, with another uh, fundraising appeal. Um, but we have, we have enough sort of momentum and, and sustaining donors' annual commitments coming together that um, I'm, I'm confident we'll be able to put it together. And, yeah. Well, that's great news. Yeah, it's all. As projects go. <laughs> yeah, really. Construction projects it's, of that magnitude, that's pretty significant. Um, that's on time and yeah, relatively on time it's, and on time. Uh, it's kind of it's, hard to believe. It's there. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, do do we need any particular permit to uh, lower the level of the pond to perform work or maintenance? I, I think we will. I think we'll need a, a permit from Fish and Wildlife. Okay. Um, and we're uh, we're still in conversations with the different permit holders about what that'll look like, um, but nobody thinks it'll be. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll probably wait till you know, September when the water level's at its lowest right. anyway. Mm. Um, it's going to be interesting when the, the cofferdam comes out this year because the current pond water level, even though we haven't been pumping water out of the pond mm. except for what leaks through the cofferdam mm. in weeks, uh, but the current pond level is is below the spillway yeah. elevation. Hmm. And so even once the copper dam's out, we may have to, we're in sort of a funny place where we're required and need to be feeding water to the stream downstream. And that's always happened naturally, leaking through the old dam. So since the new dam won't leak, we have to sort of figure out what's gonna happen if the water level's not going over the spillway to maintain water flow. 
Yeah. Right. The Maybe to use the valve. Exactly. Right. Yeah. So there, there's a bunch of figuring that will need to happen. Would you like to be a valve operator? No. <laughs> <laughs> Although we did get a just rail and trickle on your uh, yeah, yeah. on your water line right. in the winter time to make sure it doesn't freeze, you know. Yeah, exactly. Just leave things a little open. Yeah, that's so uh, that's interesting. Uh, and nobody really knows. Like, there's never been a dam that didn't leak. <laughs> and so, so, <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so, right. So, like, will it fill up really quickly with the springs coming in, yeah. or will it stay below the Spillway. But the, the whole pond is really low. All, like it is all very around. low. Yes. Yes. So it, that is, is that because of the construction? Well, or it's just a drought no, here. It's Where is the drought? Because it's because of the drought. It, it, right it, 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 it. I think it's both. Okay. Right. Because we kept it artificially low mm -hmm. through the wettest right. part of the summer. Right. Right. So it maybe would have gotten high and mm -hmm. then therefore not mm -hmm. gotten as low mm -hmm. as it is now. Um, but I don't know that it's really going to come up much before mm -hmm. it freezes over. It might be spring before we okay. see it back to regular level just based on rainfall. Yeah. Right. Um, well, thanks for the update, yeah. Jamie, and uh, commentary, everyone. Um, we've got reports next. Um, Tegan, uh, do you have? Uh, anything to, uh, add? Um, it was all elections last week. Uh, we had mm -hmm. great turnout. We had, everybody was great. Volunteers were great. Voters were great. I have no complaints. We had lots of things set in place in case there were security issues and we didn't face any security issues. Um, from a logistics standpoint, it couldn't have gone any better. <laughs> well, thank you. thank you to everyone who uh, made it go so smoothly and uh, made all of those plans. I mean, that's that's really important work, and we're fortunate uh, to be in a place where it did go smoothly. Yeah, here, here. Uh, so yeah. thank you, thank you, Tegan and Barbara and everybody else who yeah. volunteered to uh, to make that a safe and uh, and responsible civic process. Absolutely, and, and I think that's. That's all I've got, unless Barbara has something to add that I'm forgetting. Is that the information on the front porch forum about all the elections was excellent? Yeah, it was all, excellent. All, all, yeah. Everyone, it was great. Good. Well, good, because soon we'll start talking about school ballots and callous ballots and what's getting mailed and what's not, and we'll start a new round. Well, uh, get some sleep before you start doing that. Carrie, <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> um, right, the uh, financial financial. So uh, this is the report as of the end of October, sort of a third of the way through the year. You would think expenses should be somewhere around thirty-three percent if everything were distributed evenly, which they're not. Uh, general government's at forty, and I think that's mostly timing issues. But, the only places that were really over are animal control, which is complete, more or less complete. Mm -hmm. And then um, the phone internet in this building, and we have a plan to um, bring that in and switch into the internet. So um, to, to CV phone. Uh, and then on the highway department, we are running high. We're at 45%. If that's removing this uh, transfer of the, um, for some reason with the accounting, we, we recognize the income of the greater bond and that it flowed through and, and, and then went out and that wasn't budgeted. So if you remove that um, 329,000 or 45% and a lot of that's in the materials uh, and some of it we're gonna get reimbursed for. We have about $50,000 in grant money coming in um, for the, the road work that was done over on the east side. Um, so that will certainly help offset gravel and culverts and erosion stone. Um, chloride, I have to say, we just under budgeted that and, and overspent and, uh, you know, I, that's, uh, that was a learning. We didn't really spend much on chloride last year, but this year we, we really spent a lot on chloride. So, um, I I'm apologize sorry, for that's, that. That's for dust control? Yeah. 
So it was just a dry year. So yeah, I think that had a part of it. And, yeah. and we probably weren't doing very much treatment of the roads last year because yeah. a lot of our efforts were spent on reconstruction, yeah. which frankly probably exacerbated yeah. some of the need for. Yeah. Uh, I think it was 43,000. We can't be spending that much on chloride. And it just sort of got away from me. Um, so. Um, we will definitely have to bring that in for future years, and, and, and you know, just live, probably live with some dust if it's going to be that dry in September and October. We were still applying in October. I take it that's unusual. Um, we have, you know, part of that is we've made most of our debt payments in the highway department already, so that that brings up the you know the overall that that will even out. But other than that, no, no major concerns. You know, tax collection is going well. I was wondering, uh, I was struck by the Sheriff's Department budget being quite a bit over. And I thought we oh. paid them a specific amount. Did something happen? Um, I don't know. I have to look at that. Yeah, I'm Did trying to catch? find it and I can't remember where I saw that. Maybe I'd better... Um, hold my question for another time. Uh, well, they'll be coming in. Uh, they're, they're one of the folks planning on coming in for our next budget meeting, so it would be good to probably well, uh, have it, them report it, it on that. It was odd because I thought what we did was we... Sheriff's Patrol, it says we budgeted 4000 we've only spent um, a little under 1500 Oh, well, I wonder what I was thinking of. Yeah, because we, we've contracted with them for so many hours a week, so... Yeah, are you thinking it's too low, or...? No, no, that wasn't... What I was, yeah. I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah, I don't, I don't manage that at all. They, they actually set their own time. And, um, yeah. I've made a couple of requests, like, can you get out to Lightning Ridge? Mm -hmm. But I don't, I don't get any reports. All we get is we get, um, we get a little bit of revenue from time to time from traffic fines. But I, I really, they don't provide any reports about what, what they did, when they did it. Uh, how long it took and all that sort of thing. Is there billing for that uh, at a fixed fee that we pay up front or at the end of the year? Or is it... They, they send us a fee an invoice every month invoices. or every two weeks or something. We, oh, it's we, not that often, but but it comes in periodically. I, don't, I, don't I think know we get one at least every month. And I'm, I think it probably outlines what the services were. Yeah. I, don't study, I, I don't study it. I, I, I can find out more or we can ask them when they're here in two weeks. So. I mean, I think, I think it, it, it's some... I, I don't necessarily want to drill down into costs other than making sure that we have like some way of keeping track of how much time they're allocating and, and to where if we're going to consider increasing the budget for yeah. enforcement. Um, uh, it shows date, time, location, and officer every time that it comes out. Okay. Um, Once a month. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, I think if, if we're going to entertain the idea of increasing the budget for next year to uh, help support enforcement uh, initiatives, then we, we should probably have an answer from them on how we're going to report back on that or get at least some feedback on whether or not they think it's working. Um, okay, I, I apologize. I'm just not good at doing this without paper, and you guys took my printer away. So. <laughs> <laughs> we can print you a copy of the package. Yeah, maybe. Well, I'll think about that. <laughs> I would be much more on top of things if I had hard copy. Okay. <laughs> um, so, uh, moving on to, what, uh, did you have uh, town administration? <coughs> yeah, I just have a few things I wanted to run down. Yep. So, 2023 FEMA reimbursements are starting to flow again, so that's really good news. Um, the um, federal government just to, just declared that they will be uh, covering 90% of the reimbursement of the, of the damage inventory for 2023. And then the state is going to contribute 7.8, so municipalities are only responsible for 2.2%. That, that information was just clarified last week. So, um, Also, 2024 FEMA, Toby and I met with the, the team uh, and um, that was really encouraging because it looks like we may be able to include upsized culverts for Haggett and Bliss Road, Bliss Pond Road, mm -hmm. which were two of the places that got yeah. flooded out both years. And even though there was minimal damage to, or there was no damage to the culverts in either case this year, because the culverts got overwhelmed, we're going to try to include them. And, th and these are big. These yeah. are $100,000 plus projects. 
And if that could be included, it would be a real boon to the, to yeah. the town. So fingers crossed on that. Um, draft audit, I, I got a chance to, to review that last week and, and spoke with Rick Brigham, who will be here in two weeks. It does, there are, I'm going to give you a fair warning, there are two um, weaknesses, internal control weaknesses. One had to do with our FEMA expense coding, and there were some, break, some, some culverts that got, from 2023, that got um, included in our regular um, budget, mm -hmm. operating budget, that should have been FEMA in the FEMA account. And then um, another one was the, uh, the Kurzban Dam proceeds. And that, that was on me where I just didn't recognize, I didn't, it was in a holding place, it was in the U.S. Bank for a period of time, and I just recognized it as, like, as though we had it, and it needs to, it needed to have its own account, so. Anyway, you'll hear more about that. Um, Beaver Dam issue, um, John um, uh, Stafford put a notch in the top of the Cat Hill Road Beaver Dam, and, um, uh, we didn't talk about it beforehand. He just made the decision that he felt like the water level was was high. He was concerned about damage to to that road. Um, I'm surprised that Craig didn't bring it up when he was here because he was very upset about that. So I'm sorry. The, the, he did the notch deliberately in order to. Yeah, he shoveled out about a foot, a foot by a foot, kind of like more like a triangle, but just to it, stop the beaver activity. To, to lower the level of the water. The baffle only brings it down a certain amount, and, okay. and John thought it was too high. Okay. He, he probably should have talked to me before doing it. I probably would have said, okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, I, you know. Um, and Craig was worried about the beaver's den, your memo said. That's, that's what Craig, I was wondering, like, Craig, why do you care about this yeah. so much? And he felt like, well, two things. One is, that wasn't what was approved and, oh, yeah. and um, part of the plan. The other thing is he's genuinely concerned about if the water level drops, that means the beaver's den might be exposed to predators. Mm -hmm. I never even, that even occurred to me. I never mm -hmm. thought of that. I've learned more about beavers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, the water level is too high in there and it's, it's affecting other landowners as well, all the, way, all the way up to Sherry Fitch. I mean, yeah, it does strike me as high. It, it is lower than it was. Yeah. Before the baffle, the baffle has done something. I expected it to come down more, but no matter what, this needs to be addressed in the future because we're going to spend all that money fixing the, like the French mattress. Right. Yes, um, you know. Yeah. Um, the couple more things I wanted to mention are the East Cal stormwater projects are moving forward. We're preparing, um, or not we, but the uh, Regional Planning Commission is putting out uh, bid documents in the coming weeks and. At this point, at this point, the plan is to have the construction done between April and the end of July. So, and there will be a, a mandatory on-site, you know, visit so that um, bidders can see what they're getting into, and that'll happen in December, I believe. And then um, the other thing is, remember when the friends of the news team, Michelle Braun, came in and talked mm -hmm. about the dam removal mm -hmm. um, in East Callis, and we. We mentioned, I think at that time, the hazard mitigation grant. And so we were told that the replacement of the Moscow Woods Bridge on its own probably wouldn't qualify for that grant, just their analysis of the cost benefit. But they did say that if we combine it with a dam removal, then we have a chance. So we're going to go ahead and do that. And, and what's exciting about that is that this particular hazard mitigation grant will if, if we get it, we'll be funded at 100%. At least that's what they said. So those, those are two big issues that could potentially be addressed. So and we'll see. Would we be able to kind of lean on Friends of Unesky to help prepare most of that documentation and yeah, grant writing? Yeah, that, that's right. And um, they're working, it's great, they're working with SLR, SLR engineers who are the folks that are doing the stormwater projects. So we know them pretty well. In fact, it's the same engineer that seems to be involved. So. And, and she's also the person that said, you got to do something about that bridge. So, <laughs> you know, it's all, it all you know, sort of fits together pretty well. Okay. Well, that's, that's good news. Um, thanks, Harry. Sure. Um, so, meeting schedule. 
Uh, so we wanted to have a bit of a discussion uh, around the next uh, couple of meetings. Um, uh, so we'll start with that, and then there's a little bit of dialogue to work through on, on scheduling, uh, as, as well as just for like regular timing of our meetings. Um, so for the December meetings, uh, everybody filled out the doodle poll. Thank you, and Barbara, thank you for coordinating that. Um, so we have a regular meeting scheduled for the 9th and the 23rd were what has been scheduled. The 18th was unanimous with reservations from AI to be on the plane for a second. I have to get up at 4 o'clock the next morning. Yeah. Um, but that, that date was actually better than the 23rd, I believe. Um, so then the question is, when this conversation started, do we want to, you know, do we want to add a meeting date just to focus in on the budget? Certainly could do that, or we could just simply swap the 23rd and the 18th, or we'll leave things as they are. So those are the options. My sketch is pretty flexible. I'm, I'm a little nervous about working working through things uh, through December, and so you know, I I guess my my preference would be to try to get an extra meeting on the books. Um, so we, you, you are meeting, you are meeting, because I won't be able to on the twenty third. I, I I think it's going to be hard to do that, but I, uh, the one benefit of that would be that you really could devote the 18th to the budget. I mean, yeah. right. Maybe that exercise of going through every single line right. item and, yeah. it, it, and, and sort of clear the deck so you don't have other things to, to worry about. And then maybe the 23rd could be an abbreviated meeting as well. The, the one thing I like about the 23rd is that it keeps us on a regular payables right. schedule. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, but it's, it's the 23rd, it's like the, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's a terrible day. It's, it's, a, it's a terrible day for a meeting, in, but we just we just need to get a quorum. And so um, I think it's probably worth keeping on the calendar tentatively um, in, in the event it works out that we can get a quorum and have an abbreviated meeting just to kind of keep payables going. Uh, if, if that doesn't work, then that, automatically adds an agenda item to one of the previous uh, meetings to authorize Kari to uh, uh, to process payments, uh, which we've mm -hmm. done in the past to kind of get us through those periods before, but it, it's kind of challenging. And then the really tricky bit is that it would stack up quite a few weeks, I think, before we're meeting again in January. So January. Um, <laughs> It'd be nice if we didn't have to add too many other agenda items to to the earlier meetings. Um, if we know that we have the twenty third in our back pockets. So my understanding, you think we'll finish the budget on the eighteenth? Mm -hmm. Is that the plan? Well, we have fire department. We'll have met with the fire department. Yeah, and, and you know, they're, they're sort of yeah, outside they're the scope of, yeah, yeah. of our buyers. Um, it, it just depends on how, you know, productive we can be in getting the reductions. We have, we have two meetings before this, on the 25th and the 20th, yeah. December 9th. Yeah. I don't think you finalized the budget until early January last year, did you? That's right. Sandra nearly had a heart attack about it. <laughs> uh, but that's there, right. There and a, a lot of it was because a lot of things didn't come in. Right. It was those fire departments at the end. Yeah. And also, uh, some of the insurance, even Passit, I think, held you up for a while. Washington County Treasurer was a nightmare for you. So I think that was the last thing that, that came one. in, I believe. Yeah. Well, that was because of the flood. They had yeah. you know, all oh. in disarray. Okay. So. So. so maybe, I guess, is the answer. <laughs> so do you see the 18th as being a long slog then? 
we well, it depends on how much time we devote to budget next time. We haven't, we haven't dug in yet. No. Or we have two meetings. We, so or we have two meetings, right. So maybe we could spend a set amount of time working on one part of the budget next next meeting and another of the meeting after that. Or we'll have to, you know. So is it possible to, to maybe make that big chunk the road budget for the next meeting? Um, sure. And uh, that is, is a pretty substantial chunk yeah. that needs dialogue. And then um, theoretically, that's out of the way. Uh, yeah. And then gives us a little bit of extra time to uh, zero in on, uh, on the governance uh, budget for the ninth. And then yeah. that'll make the 18th uh, a full, full review of uh, everything. Um, I like that idea. I will not be here for the 25th, but I will, I can, uh, I'm going to, the 23rd, yeah, the 25th, oh, the 25th, no, oh, November 25th, yeah. Uh, we've got to have that conversation, that staffing conversation at some point, um, and I don't really know how we're going to structure it. Are you going to do some more work, Kari, and come back with a proposal, or? Uh, yes, yeah, yeah. Do we help? I was going to ask if we could do something to help with that. I would help with it. Yeah, I, I think uh, somebody like has. I'd like to help you with it. Okay. Yeah, that's what I was here. I was just looking at what, what different towns did for their, uh, you know, road commissioner. It's, it's amazingly different. Oh, yeah? Really? Yeah, so it'd be an interesting discussion. Okay. I'd be happy to help you with that. All right. Uh, thanks, Bill. I think that, that that would be great to work through some of that, though, I, you know, I think to a certain extent, and while it's a fairly urgent thing, and I think it's most urgent that we earmark right. a, a certain amount of budget for addressing the issue, and, and to right. a certain extent, that's a simpler, um, that's a simpler question than, uh, then what is the thing? I, I, I'm a little worried that if we don't have something of a plan, when we come to the town and say, well, we need more staff, they're going right. to say, well, what do you mean? We gave you more staff right. last year. We, yeah. we really yeah. are going to have to have our act together a little bit better than that. We have a concept of a plan. <laughs> 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 that, that, that All we've had this there. whole time is a concept of a plan. Uh, yeah. Right. That, that, agreed. And I, and I guess I wonder if it starts to if it starts to materialize um, as we're making preparations for the town report, whether whether or not that ends up being kind of a lion's share of what you know the planning ahead and mm -hmm. anticipation or, or the rationale behind funding um, additional staffing uh, expense. Yeah. Um, yeah. I have a question related to the 18th. If you decide to have that meeting and it's just budget related, just budget dedicated, do you want Orca to be here to videotape? By law, it has to be taped, but Zoom qualifies. If, it, if there's no other agenda item other than budget, do you want me to book Orca or not? I mean, if we're recording by Zoom, I, I think that that is probably probably fine. <laughs> but so the question is, do the members of the public want to see the budget discussion on Orca? Uh, well, we can. Orca would accept a copy of the Zoom recording, I guess, and and post that. Mm -hmm. I believe so. Well, I know we've done that in the past oh, okay. uh, where we've needed to uh, make up some video recording for one reason or another. So I, I say we make that the plan. Okay, um, so no work up on this 18. I mean, unless, unless you put it out to them and they say, uh, we'd love to be there. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's, I think it's a slight board's call. So they have a strong opinion? No. Uh, no, I I put it out out to them to let them know that we're having one, but that we'd be willing to uh, provide footage uh, via um, 
via Zoom or yeah, Zoom recording. Relieve them of that particular obligation. Okay, thank you. And what time are we going to start on the 18th? Well, that's the next thing oh, for sorry. schedule. Start time. Uh, start times. Uh, so, um, uh, despite the marathon last time um, and uh, yet another meeting running behind, uh, it, there was some feedback that uh, maybe starting earlier uh, was better for schedules. Um, uh, and it was proposed that maybe we adopt a five o'clock start time um, for the regular meeting schedule. Um, going I'm forward or just forward? Going forward. Mm -hmm. So that would be the new normal uh, time. Um, previously, I think when we adopted the last uh, uh, rules and procedures, we had tentatively moved it forward to six o'clock and then we seemed to like six o'clock and adopted new rules that say it's gonna be six o'clock uh, and uh, now we're uh, <coughs> contemplating uh, whether or not five o'clock uh, is, is workable. Um, I think the six o'clock driver was largely to accommodate uh, working schedules, but um, if it is not as much of a conflict for the members of this select board to make the move to five o'clock, it's likely easier. It sounds like it'd be easier, a little easier for staff uh, who need to attend. We can we'll, also- We'll do whatever, but uh, <laughs> yeah. I know I'm a morning person. Um, and try to keep the meetings from running too too late into the, uh, into the evening. Uh, the other consideration uh, would be Bros, and whether or not uh, that would pose a conflict to your schedule to continue to perform? It might. Um, I discussed this with um, Barbara last week on Wednesday. I didn't see my boss on Thursday. She didn't work Friday. I didn't work today, so tomorrow's going to be the first day um, that I could. Um, like, today's a Monday, and I didn't work today. Mm. So if I could just say, can I have these two Mondays off? month, you know, the first, the second and the fourth, it might work, so um, uh, I won't know. Okay. Yeah. Well, we don't necessarily need to make a decision on it, uh, on it tonight, uh, but we did want to have the conversation and just throw it out there. My concern is that we start early and then it just seems like we have the whole evening. <laughs> 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 Some extra conversation uh, around how we might be able to kind of rein in, uh, rein in the meetings and the agendas. Uh, and uh, this was supposed to be the the first attempt at that. It didn't go so well, but uh, uh, but you know I'm I'm certainly committed to uh, trying to adopt some uh, practices that, uh, that they keep the conversation moving um, with a little bit more intent um, moving forward. It's going to be hard with budget, uh, yeah. budget conversations yeah. to make a promise for the next what couple. But well on is talking about the budget, right? Yeah. Well, I uh, if, to answer your question, I'm, I'd be available at five if yeah. roses if it works out. I have no strong opinions between five and six. It doesn't really make a difference to me. Except right. dinner, right? No, well, sure. theoretically, if we, you know, do a better job making them two-hour meetings, then we could probably get home for some sort of reasonable dinner hour. Uh, otherwise, we have to wait until after dinner hours, and that's always the debate. And, but, yeah, I, you know, I th I'm fine tabling this until, uh, until we have some more feedback from, from Rose and, um, and take it up to the next, next meeting. See if we can't push them a little further forward. So we'll keep next meeting at six o'clock, and then uh, if we can, we'll we'll roll into five o'clock start times if it if it works for everybody uh, in December. We'll have another one. Let's be sure. What? It seems like certainly for the 
18th. You would probably prefer that one, regardless of where we go. I, I went else. to 4 o'clock, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Might be a consideration. You know, and that one's already a special meeting, so right. you know we yeah. can we can make that one uh, earlier. Yeah, yeah. I appreciate it. We can do it at four. Right? Adjournment. Then. Yeah, we can do whatever. Okay. Uh, four o'clock on the eighteenth. Oh really? Oh, I was it, really. Uh, wow. I mean, I didn't. I, <laughs> <laughs> I'd say it's a strong possibility for me. Okay. I guess I'd, I'll have to look a little bit closer at my schedule, um, but you know, we'll put that on the table too. Uh, with that, uh, I guess I'll take a motion to adjourn. So moved. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.